Good evening, one and all. Welcome to a special edition of Show Business. I come to you as always as Charles, otherwise known as Sipo. To screen right is Lindsay of My Two Cents of Nonsense. Hello. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. I'm glad we're starting to do this again. Let's have some fun, guys. Indeed. And bottom screen, uh, it's not a bizarro world episode of all top yeah. screen. We have guests. Uh, to my bottom is Cody Leach. Cody, how are you? I'm just surprised that there was less than a minute of intro. I'm proud of you. And little Charles is growing up. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I was getting ready to go piss and everything. And I'm like, we're on. Be back in an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's up, guys? And, and to bottom screen, right? Co uh, no, you're not Cody. You're Sean. Sean Chandler. Sean Chandler talks about How are you? I'm good. I'm good. This is fun because I haven't talked about South by Southwest yet. So. I'm oh, really? Excited. I thought you had I, a bunch of reviews. Well, I mean, I've done some individual videos, but I haven't, I like the mainstream stuff like that, like talking about the fall guy is not interesting because everyone knows about that, but mm -hmm. all the smaller ones are kind of the, the fun side of going to a film festival and recommending things to uh, movies to people that they haven't heard of yet. Yeah. So I, I brought three different badges to be super Blingage. duper prepared for this whole deal. You know? Just in case we didn't believe you. <laughs> yeah, just in case. Like I, I, I could, I had two different badges. So I had my feet up and the seat next to me, which people loved. Um, is, is Sean low for you guys? Or is that just me? Slightly. Well, I'm here still adjusting all my setup. So I, I'm not one to judge. How are we uh, now? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was just, yeah, just move it closer perhaps. now that we're in uh, live mode. Okay, so um, Sean, you were at South by Southwest, obviously. Um, can nope, not me. <laughs> can you uh, tell us about your experience and and any surprises? You don't have to say whether or not they were good or bad. Just things you weren't expecting to catch your attention. Yeah, so um, kind of with these film festivals, generally speaking, whenever. I prepare to go to them. I look at what's showing and I don't know what anything is besides the headliners. <laughs> like you look at it and there's like these big gigantic, you know, we're getting the world premiere of Alex Garland movie and you know, civil war fall guy, monkey man, these movies that, you know, roadhouse. And then you have, you know, 50 other movies, 60 other movies that are playing that maybe they don't even have distribution yet. Mm -hmm. And they might have a movie star in them, but it's not the one that they're promoting yet. And so that's kind of the, the, the fun of it is that, you know, you go see something smaller earlier in the day. And then that night you're in the Paramount theater in downtown Austin and Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, Sydney Sweeney, Anne Hathaway are there promoting the film. And, you know, two of the movies, I was in the front row, like Anne Hathaway is 10 feet away from me. Sydney Sweeney is 10 feet away from me. And it's that that's fun. It's exciting. It's cool. Like they're a real person. I can see them with my human eyes right in front of me. This is amazing. But um, yeah, kind of the way it works, um, it, it's kind of a frustrating ticketing system because you don't know what you're going to be able to see really too much in advance. There's a couple, maybe if you're lucky, they have an express system where maybe you can get a ticket to a movie. But otherwise, you have to wait in line. So to see Monkey Man, I sat on a curb for, for three hours. <laughs> And um, I, I forget the guy's name, but he's one of the stars of the movie Y2K that's up there. And he started in Arcadian. He's one of the kids in, in It. Um, but so he, he was there for two different world premieres. And he was sitting in line on the curb to watch Monkey Man. He was in front line in he front was of in him. It. So, so he, wait, like, he waited. Th <laughs> he, well, he was at Arcadian earlier in the day where he's on stage with Nick Cage promoting their new movie. And then he's like, well, I want to see Monkey Man. Uh, we don't have badges for you. You don't have a ticket for you. So he's sitting on the curb like for, for three and a half hours to see Monkey Man. <laughs> Literally like, making a talent wait. <laughs> right, right. Legitimately. One he way had to humble two him. world premieres. <laughs> one of them with Rachel Ziegler and the other one like over oh here with uh, uh, Nicolas Cage. He's sitting on the curb. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's South by Southwest. And then Fall Guy, I waited three and a half hours on the curb. And it's kind of mm -hmm. funny to see the two different audiences for those two different movies. But uh, uh, with Fall Guy, they um, were sitting next to a bunch of college girls that kept breaking into I'm Just Ken. Every five minutes, <laughs> I'm just Ken anywhere. That's like, that's all they knew. They only knew like that one line, <laughs> nothing else from the song. But every once in a while, they would do that. But um 
Yeah, I mean, I got I can dive into some of you know some of those. Uh, what did I think about some of the headliners and some of the the deeper cuts on there? If if you would be so interested. Sure. Um, anybody above me or below me have anything to contribute or ask? Uh, you don't have to elaborate too much. How does that festival compare to what we've experienced at Fantastic Fest? Yeah. So with Fantastic Fest, it's all at one theater, Alamo Draft House, South Lamar. It has its own parking garage. So it's all at one place. Alamo Draft House is the restaurant movie mm -hmm. theater. So you can get food right there. Plus there's places like right there, one block away you can eat at. So you just pull up early in the day, stay there all day. Everyone you want to see and hang out with or your friend, that's they're all at the one theater. South by Southwest is at the, the Zach Theater, Paramount Theater, State Theater, Violet oh, wow. Crown Theater, Alamo Draft House, South Lamar, um, and a couple other ones. I get to like, seven theaters. Oh, and the overflows at AFS, which is five miles down the road. So this is like, like eight different theaters. Wow. And it's at different time blocks, and you don't know if you're getting in. So because I didn't have a ticket to Monkey Man, because I didn't have a different to Fall Guy, the block before where I usually would have been seeing a movie, I was like, I'm just not going to go see a movie. I'm going to go sit on the curb. Hmm. And there were other times where, like, you might even have an express badge to get into a movie, but you just can't get there in time. Because you get out of your, your showing at the Paramount. The movie starts late because the, the talent was late for the red carpet. They play the movie. And then they do a 20 minute Q and A and you wonder, I mean, Ryan Gosling's talking about his movie with Emily. The Blatt. talent was late because they were waiting on the curb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they, they too were sitting on the curb. And so then you're late and then you have to either walk to your car or the first day I didn't park by the mm. theater. I parked at the first theater I was at, which was a mile and a half away. <laughs> and so I had to walk two miles to the theater. I wasn't checking the time I get there. Look at the time. And the movie started 30 minutes earlier. Oh, so, <laughs> Yikes. um, you know, there, there's, it's, it's dramatically more stressful. There's a lot more uncertainty to it. There's chaos to it, but it's also there. There's also, um, like I, I'm sitting there in the, the front row waiting for immaculate to start. And then, uh, Scott Mance, who's pretty famous in the movie space. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and after the movie civil war played, he was on CNN the next day. Yeah. talking about civil war like that's the degree to which the, that's the category he's in um hmm. i'm just sitting there in the front row and he goes are are you sean chandler <laughs> yes <laughs> scott mance i am the sean chandler of the scott mance he goes I, you know, I, I see you on twitter all the time it's like well you scott mance i also see you on the twitter as well as <laughs> everywhere else including cnn scott mance um but like like he saw like he was excited to see me i was like what's going on right now that scott mance is excited to meet me i was excited to try and meet him well who but would be excited like, to see you sean <laughs> but like so everyone's just i'm gonna start doing like, that every time i get with sean be like are you <laughs> the sean <laughs> well, so you know See you, uh, on Twitter. Cody, you know my buddy Vincent. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, he's of course at this and kind of the whole week people are like, are you Sean Chandler? And that be <laughs> he starts making fun of me. Like, <laughs> yeah. every time he, you know, he's known me since the third grade. And now we're at this deal. He's like, are, are you <laughs> Sean Chandler? <laughs> and like, like I'd be talking to my buddy Vincent and then someone would see me and they'd almost like squeeze in between the two of us to cut off Vincent. And Vincent's uh. like standing behind the person like, What's, like we're just talking like, I'm like, like yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't i don't i'm sorry man mm -hmm. kind of big so, deal <laughs> it's always yeah, funny when you, a... you recognize somebody in public that you watch on a screen there's like a slight uncanny valley yeah, there so i remember last like... time at fantastic fest the guy stopped me and he's walking and talking with me and i made a point really quickly to be like yeah i'm here with sean like just assuming if you know me you know sean he's talking to me for like five minutes and he's all right man nice to meet you and he goes to turn he goes Oh my God, Sean Chandler! And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm here with that Sean. <laughs> so yeah, there's some of those interesting ones like that. But that, but there's just all these people that like I meet on, I know on Twitter or on YouTube, and they're they're all just there. And that, mm. as someone that you know, like you know, doing this this internet deal, you know, you know, Cody's a thousand miles away from me. Uh, See here, what what 1500 miles away from me? Uh, I'm not sure. Our, our third friend, I do not know where you live, so I, I don't know how far Hollywood, away you live. baby. Oh, uh, yeah, well, oh, Hollywood, Altadena, thousand, yeah, yeah, but at this point, so right, exactly, we're in the whole spectrum of the country, mm -hmm. and then you know, at film festivals, you're all right there, mm -hmm. and so you, like 
it's like Twitter in real life. It's it's kind of fun. <laughs> um, except minus all the yelling, screaming, and insanity. Well, I was about to say the good side. parts of Twitter in real life. Yeah, the good <laughs> the good side to Twitter. Um, Actual anyway, community. That, <laughs> all right, that's that's talking about all the stuff. Uh, kind of diving into some movie stuff. Um. Yeah. On the actual movies that played at it, uh, Civil War, the new Alex Guard film, I thought it was actually, I was, went and excited for it, and I thought it, it picked the right tone and the right balance okay. um, to where it it kind of is more like, just like, let's sh- play this out if there was a Civil War and show, show it to you. And they made the point that the movie was trying to celebrate journalism, and you wonder like, okay, how's that going to play out in the mm. modern era? And, mm. But it, it like... Okay. It's, we think journalism these days, and you're thinking about like CNN and Fox News and like 24 hour news, which is like that's a different Junk. beast. Yeah. 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 It, and so, like, they're talking about the people that actually like are on the ground trying to document what's actually happening. Um, okay. And that's the perspective of the film. It's like it's about the people trying to reveal the reality of what's happening and all the people's reactions to it. And so, it's interesting to see most everyone there seemed like really like it in the perspective it took. And then there was like the 10% that were like, this is egregious. How do you make a movie called Civil War and not pick a side? And oh. like they're curious uh, that the movie yeah, wasn't yeah. like preachy. I'm okay. curious how okay. it like, it's South by Southwest. Um, You know, you don't have a lot of like people running around in MAGA hats. You know, a lot of like people like with their Daily Wire shirts running around. I, I'm curious, <laughs> what is the interpretation of the right? Because you, you'll see the, the kickback from a, some people on the left a lot of people there very much enjoyed it i'm curious how it will play um with a, a larger section of the right uh fall sure, guy wait, hold on is i'm a, sorry shoot, i'm oh, sorry, Sean. Anyway, sorry um probably should was it you said it was presented from the perspective of journalists is, is yeah. it shot like a is it i don't want to say found footage but is it kind of like a pseudo documentary sh- style sh- or? yeah shaky no, cam I mean, to a certain it, degree no i mean it's it's um like it's actually shot quite beautifully. Like there's sec- sec- sections in it where they're like driving through cities and they're like these gorgeous shots, but it's of America burning. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, it's a lot of that juxtaposition where you're like watching something and it's thrilling and exciting, but it's horrifying. Or these oh, images of like these sparks falling over this town are gorgeous, but they represent something gut wrenching. And so the whole movie kind of has that that two levels of emotion to it. Um, uh, hmm. of, with the images that you're seeing, it's very much in the like it's immersive. You feel like you're in the seek, like it, it, so. It's the you know our lead character is Kirsten Dunst, who's a wartime photographer, and so mm-hmm. that's her thing. She's just going into a war zone. She's not picking a side. She's documenting what's happening, and so then it's it's kind of us over her shoulder, and so you're like feeling the danger of people could get shot at any point in time. And then Mm. you're having these moments where she's capturing these images and you just watched a person die, but it, it, um, it just plays it matter of fact and Mm. people treat it that way. And some people are broken by it. They're like, I don't, it like there's sequences in it where, um, they, they encounter people that are like hiding to like avoid being shot. And like, who's it, who's it, which side is the guy over there? I'm like, He's on the side that's shooting at us. Like, <laughs> why is he shooting at you? I don't know, but I'm going to shoot him before he shoots me. Like, no. yeah, but who is and, mm. and it? And it like, just like these little subtle ways to like touch on the fact, like so often, like, we don't even know what we're fighting about. We don't even remember the arguments started, but we're like, it's so in the middle of it that we haven't stopped to think about what we're doing. And it just has all these little images, different characters that represent a different perspective of all the way that there's conflict and how the there's a cluelessness to it. Of like, please, like, just stop, step back, please, be reasonable, please listen to people. It's um, so unfortunate it's just, that people need to have cool. a political side to like. What side is it? Like, why not just have the movie and and figure it out for yourself? But why do you need to be told right, right. like what perspective the movie is? Like, right? It's like oh, I've never seen a movie so noisy, side. say so little, like. The whole point was to give you a play out a scenario. Let's play this out. What if we right. continue down this polarized mm. conflict, play it out and see what it looks like. You can make of it what you want. You can take away what you want. You can like see yourself in it. You can see people around you and let the art be interpreted by, by the, the viewer. What a novel idea. <laughs> right. 
Crazy. Well, and then, then when you have like the the kind of like detached, no, well, not detached. That's not the right word of what you said. Where like you you're 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 just pres- the matter of factual way it presents mm-hmm. the movie, and then people start applying kind of like, oh, the movie's trying to say this, trying to say that. Then that's them kind of projecting their own thing on it in the first place. So that's kind of fascinating. If that's what the movie's yeah. going to end up doing, it's it's going to be really it uh, you, almost like a mirror. You look at it, what do you mm-hmm. see? Kind of a thing. Exactly. I, that, I'm excited. Yeah. Yes, that that's one of the languages that I use. That it's, it's very much a mirror movie. It's like let's put cool. this up, okay. and they they like they talk about it um, in terms of uh, oh, like my, oh, my my parents are actually out in Colorado pretending like this isn't happening, and other people are like they they they're two people um, who've been journalists for a while. They're different perspectives of you know I've forgotten what the world looks like, and the other one is like this is what I remember the world is supposed to be like like all of these different perspectives and ways that people interpret what's happening around us. It just has all these little windows, little mirrors to, that you can take away whatever you want from it. And so, so many people in that room had a very positive reaction to it. Uh, cool. Scott Manson, we talked about, it. I think he used the word masterpiece when he talked about it. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah. I, it, it <laughs> might, it's, a lot of movies coming out of this were apparently a masterpiece, but uh, that was one of my favorites coming out of it. Like I was hoping to really like it, but I was nervous this is the guy that did men is his last film. What's he going to do with civil war? Hmm. And I think he, I think he absolutely picked the right direction that did so many things so well. Um, cool. Like I said, like it, it looks beautiful. It, well, it cost $50 million and it's one of those movies where you go like, why does this look so good? So big, so immersive. And these you know, 200, $300 million Disney things look like. Yeah. So people artificial. forget it's, the director of Ex Machina too, where, where it's just, yeah. oh yeah, um, you know, he, he knows how to do what he's doing every now and again. <laughs> uh, Annihilation, that was him too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he just, knows what he, he's doing. He just tripped once. That's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so you were getting into the Fall Guy. I, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, some of these I don't. I think some of these don't need as much description. Fall yeah, guy, we don't. I thought it was a blast. Uh, where it's it's like practical stunts, but big spectacle. It's a romance. It's a comedy. It's about movie making, but not in a pretentious sense. Uh, so I thought it was just a real cl- crowd pleaser of a movie um, that I had, like the room was going wild with it. Um, mm-hmm. but, you know, then if you're watching a movie with Ryan Gosling in the film, you're probably going to have a pretty good time with it. <laughs> Especially if he's there with you. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, <laughs> like, he's right below me in the, the lower section with his eight guests. <laughs> um. Yeah, so these are some of the bigger movies that were uh, premiering at South by Southwest. Um, Monkey Man got a two-minute standing ovation, and Dev Patel, the writer-director ooh. star, but walked out. It was basically crying at the stage. Uh, every up. movie got a big reaction. Monkey Man was the only standing ovation, and then it won the audience award after the festival was over. With. Wow. Uh, so it like people were going pretty wild for it. I... I, I, I think think it had more flaws than some people were giving. Like, it has a cool style to it. It has cool action. It does have, like, dramatic pacing issues of, like, it's a long time before the first action set piece, and then that's really long. Then it, like, okay. slows down to rebuild the character, do all this lore, do all this stuff. It's been a long time. And then we have another gi- big, gigantic action set piece. Um, there's too many ideas in there, but it it's... When it, when it works, it works really well. Yeah, I, I was... Uh, on what I've, of what I've seen, I, I felt like it's it's John Wick with a different flavor. Is am I they're, too far off? Marketing with that? it that way, but it's not that. Um, it because it's like the action set pieces are in this high end building. So it's okay. he's in a suit, nightclub, stylized lighting. Of course, that looks like John Wick. But yeah. the movie itself is about like Indian culture, Indian politics, Indian lore. Uh, all this other stuff and like he's out in a village training he's in underground fights and stuff that like it's it's much more thoughtful more political ideas in it um it has all this other stuff it de- definitely doesn't have like the breakneck pacing of john wick so like some of the comparisons for sequences are fair for the movie as a whole it's a very different type of film and if you go in expecting like john wick yeah once it get go- gets going it doesn't stop no, this one stops. Like it slows <laughs> down. He has to heal and he has to learn and has a mentor. And there's all sorts of stuff. Um, all right. But, um, I'd but, like, like to I get said, Cody in on this. Sorry. Um, Roadhouse <laughs> premiered at South by Southwest as well. I know, Cody, you just put up a review. Um, mm-hmm. Let Sean drink there. What, 
thoughts on on that as it's being released it, it's out right isn't it out tomorrow i believe yeah. on amazon um yeah i got a, a screener for it I, I enjoyed it much more than i thought i would uh i'm not somebody who's like a die hard of the first film the original but i do like it it's always been kind of a mainstay it's one of my my dad's movies i was it's like the ultimate dad movie uh <laughs> he, he was always playing and he loved wade garrett actually my youngest brother is named after wade garrett huh. so that's how much of a fan my, my dad is a roadhouse <laughs> Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it's faults were exactly what I expected, uh, looking maybe a little bit too modern generic. Like it looks like other things, especially the third act. But if you just go in to have fun with it, which is just the type of movie that you should just kind of go in to have fun with it, not walk in expecting more than what it's going to be. It, I feel like it understands the legacy of the original. It's a goofy, silly, over-the-top concept where dudes beat the shit out of each other. And that's the same thing here. Um, it, it doesn't have quite the iconic lines or characters that the original has, but Jake Gyllenhaal is a lot of fun. The physicality and the fighting is a lot of fun. I was surprised how much I actually enjoyed Conor McGregor. I thought that he was probably going to do too much, but it was actually like the perfect amount of too much for what the movie needs. And we got to see a little bit too much in the perfect sense. Yeah, Giddy up. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 a lot of that. The naked people is one of the main, you know, one of the pivotal elements of the, the original Roadhouse. And this movie gives us a lot of that in Conor McGregor. Yes. Oh, exactly. oh. <laughs> multiple but, sequences. Mm -hmm. I guess naked. that's what the world needed. <laughs> Wanted. Yeah, what, he's got to justify that paycheck i think he he set the record for highest first time actor paycheck of all time um oh, i read wow. that somewhere i don't know if it's real but nonetheless yeah it's it, i'm easily pleased with old school action movies you get a charismatic lead yeah. you get some bad guys that i like to hate and just watch them beat the shit out of each other for 90 minutes it's pretty hard to screw up that experience for me uh but i i, I said it this way to somebody today on facebook i don't think many people who love the original are going to prefer this one but I think most people who like the original will at least enjoy this one. Cool. Oh, okay. Um, Sean, uh, how was the experience at South by? How, how did the crowd receive it at a premiere? So it was opening night. Jake Gyllenhaal walks out, introduces it, and he goes, hey, you know, some nobody named Post is in the room. Post Malone. Post Malone was in the room. Conor McGregor was in the room. And so you're watching it in like the most amped up possible environment. Mm. People went nuts the whole movie. Huh. I mean, they were like, well, that, this is every world premiere at South by Southwest. People are clapping, going nuts like we're end game. Mm. Um, <laughs> but you have to keep in mind, literally the cast and crew of the movie are in the film or in the theater with all their friends. And so even some of it is like Conor McGregor walks out naked and the person sitting next to him goes, "Woo, that's my friend. So the whole theater starts clapping and hooting and hollering. So like they were going nuts for this movie, it, like wild amounts of energy. And it's a movie that's perfectly designed for that. It's like, um, you know, it, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal takes his shirt off in slow mo and flexes. Um, you know, it, the, the, there's some guy that's being a jerk, and then he beats the crap out of him. Like it's filled with moments where you want to go, yeah. Like when people <laughs> tried to bring that energy to Civil War, it was like, <laughs> like, like, like yeah, maybe dial it back. But like, legitimately, the 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 opening logos on movies, people are like, yeah, going crazy cheering for production companies. That's the <laughs> environment at it. But so after the movie, okay. the whole cast okay. comes out, and the Q and A was 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 awful. Oh no! Conor McGregor wouldn't <laughs> shut up, <laughs> and they'd be like, "So Jake, what what inspired you? What's your favorite Patrick Swayze movie?" And then, "Well, I'll tell you what." And he grabbed the mic and he would like start talking over Jake Gyllenhaal, the star of the film. And at oh, some geez. point in time, uh, uh, someone in the back of the room goes. Shut up! <laughs> he just literally yells at him in the theater. Something you only yell being, when he can't see who's saying it. It, 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 it was being empty, right? You don't normally tell Conor McGregor to shut up yeah. in the same room with him. Not a great idea. But it was being emceed by Dax Shepard, and he literally goes, 
uh, who's Connor was right next to me. He goes, uh, sir, I actually have a list of questions. The studio has told me I have to ask. So if we can actually get back to the questions and I think they did turn his mic off so they could start to like, Oh, they, wow. like, literally had, like the, wow. like, the, the was he just well, drunk? Doug, Doug yeah. Lyman was in it's the room. Be it. uh, it, I, I don't know if he's drunk or if he's just like, right. cause I'm having, I'm having uh, flashbacks to when we saw terrifier too. And there was the one dude who was hammered that just every five seconds <laughs> it, was just like, tell him about this. <laughs> it was that except the guy was on stage and had the mic, but Doug yeah. Lyman oh. was in large. the room. He never Ooh. went on stage though, but he was in attendance. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and multiple people went, Doug Lyman, our director, did a great job. He's right there. Uh, but since he, he was like protesting his movie, but also was there to support his movie. So, thank oh, you. wait, well, I love Doug Lyman. I didn't know he directed it. He's protesting the movie, you said? Like, what, because it's the, not getting a theatrical the, release. Yeah. Oh. And it is the so, type of I movie think where I, I was bummed. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. I was bummed that I had to watch it at home because as much as I enjoyed it, I, I, I said this in my review, as much as I enjoyed it, it would have been at least half a star higher if I had yeah. the experience that Sean had. If I saw it with my dad yeah. and a couple other rowdy action fans and every time somebody gets their neck broke, like, yeah, like that, that adds to it. So I wonder if on my review, I went a little, I went more negative and I think I was trying to counterbalance some of the fun of the day. I mean, because it's mm -hmm. just a great, that is such a fun night and the right yeah, movie, yeah, whether yeah. the movie's good or not good or not. But so Doug Lyman to that point, um, mm -hmm. he, they Great do director. a bunch of interesting stuff with the way the action is shot. I don't think mm -hmm. all of it works, okay. but they do interesting stuff with the way the action is shot. And like, it's like close ups, but wide angle lenses. So you like feel really mm -hmm. close and I'm there's sure. some stuff with the, the timing things sp feel sped up at times. And there's like some, there's like one point in time you're in the middle of a fight and it's third person. And then suddenly it's first person. Um, hmm. So some of that was distracting, but some of it was really cool. Mm -hmm. Do you guys, I That's mean, like you kind of touched on it. Do you guys think that I, well, I, I mean, you might've answered it already, Sean. I, I mean, this is for everybody. Do you think that the experiences at, at these festivals and conventions kind of, cause you're, you're, in a theater where everybody either wants to be there, they're on the screen, they, they have some sort of predetermined investment. Uh, I mean, because I, I keep reading about like can there's like 15 minutes standing ovations for clerks, too. And it's like, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, does it like does it harm your ability to grade the film as, you know, just the film itself rather than the experience? I don't think yes, that it's it harmed mine as long as you acknowledge it. Like, I think a lot of people were taken aback. And this was my first, you know, my first night, literally, at my first uh, convent or my first festival experience at Fantastic Fest when I saw Terrifier 2. Cool. I had already, you know, been on record. I wasn't a big fan of the first film. I had been on record that I was not excited for the second film. I was the guy rolling my eyes at the runtime. <laughs> and then I walked out really positive on it. And I was pretty forthright. Like, hey, I'm, I'm watching it. Like, I'm, I'm 15 feet from Chris Stuckman. I'm 10 yep. feet from, you know, Damien Leone and Arthur Sean Clown. Sean Chandler. And, yeah, I'm next to the Sean Chandler. He was there. And so getting it, sick it, from it, eating the uh, Mexican. Yeah. I mean, it's midnight popcorn, screening with a bunch of mm -hmm. skin, I mean, scalps. Yeah. So I, I, you, as long as you acknowledge, like I watched it in the coolest context possible, but I've seen the movie a couple of times since my experience is exactly the same. Uh, and I, I do think that there are some people that can't do that because we see a lot of uh, not just with even festivals, but just premieres in general. You okay. see a lot of just over excitement and a lot of just overdone mm. reviews with it seems like every release I, I tweeted earlier i'm kind of relieved that the ghostbusters reactions are so all over the fucking place because mm. it's like the first movie in like three years where everybody who saw it early is not like it's masterful my life has been changed it, mckenna grace is everything it's like always the same three or four canned responses but there's absolutely some people that i think let the experience cloud the actual movie uh and there's some people that i for whatever reason feel like they have to be more positive on it because they were invited to this place like i i've, I've never named anybody but I, I literally talked to a guy at fantastic fest after we walked out of a movie and he was eh, yeah it was eh, very lukewarm on it and then 10 minutes later i see his tweet response and you would have thought that he got a blowjob in the movie it was just like <laughs> where was that energy when i was talking to you so there there's some of that in my opinion 
Yeah. That's funny that we're talking about that because we kind of touched on this last week with the award ceremonies and the way that like uh, uh, like the uh, the Golden Globes and stuff like that. With Chauncey, you remember that? Mm-hmm. The kind of kickbacks and stuff like that. that ended up oh, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. The motivation, so to speak. The, the behind what, why people enjoy something or not. Yeah. Yeah, like Sean's necklaces over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are Pressler's precious artifacts, man. Like, <laughs> uh, but, but, I mean, I think there's a... You have people that they're whole careers built around getting exposure getting Mm -hmm. access Mm -hmm. getting retweets getting quoted in articles you're at the world premiere where the publicist like like on on most of these big big movies if you put out a positive quote tweet for them their team would like take a quote and make a little mini video out of it within an hour so i have one of those for monkey man and Mm -hmm. other people got him for fall guy so that they're like they're reading every quote reaction to their movie coming out of it. If you want to get pull quoted and put in the trailer, if you want to be pull quoted in an advertisement, yeah. if you Don't want to be it was in okay. Variety's article <laughs> yeah. and Hollywood Reporter's article and every aggregated article on first reactions, you throw out your your strongly worded Hyperbole. one against lots yeah. of retweets. And if yours is positive, it's more likely to get retweeted by the official account, which means you're going to get dozens and dozens of additional retweets and so there's just an allure there's a motivation to come out and have the strongest language the most positive reaction to the film and then um there's also that side to it of um like i had to wait in these three hour lines there's one movie i was able to get one ticket to get in i was i was actually trying to get my wife in and so i was i had my fraudulent badge for to fraudulently get my wife in and then i was able mm-hmm. to get her a ticket but it's like emailing the pr people like I- i've got this following i'll post a review i'll do this and this and this but i'm not promising it'll be positive and so i give if i give their movie negative review and they read and they go this jerk gave us exposed us all the negative press and so you think people are trying to get tickets to every single movie and they don't have integrity to it. They're, they're, they don't want to burn the bridges. They want to get invited to every one of these. They want to be in the front row to get a picture. Like when I'm in immaculate front row and Sydney Sweeney's eight feet away. And then the, the idea of you and Anne Hathaway's eight feet away. That's pretty fun. And neat. it came about because, of, <laughs> you know, it you like, if you want that every festival, all of a sudden you're being nice to every movie. There's mm-hmm. motivators. There's reasons mm-hmm. that like, why on earth? Do some of these things seem so overly positive and written the way that they're written? There's an incentive. And I'm I just going to go I on even... record and say Sydney Sweeney, everything she's done is incredible. Master. <laughs> 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 Five <laughs> thumbs up. I, I, I don't know how many thumbs I have. She but... <laughs> is everything. She I is bet. the moment. She's white hot right now, too. Uh, it's so funny that Madam Webb was just a yeah. stepping stone in, in her career. She was smart the way she navigated that. Even I love how hot she was, even though like I didn't do this, but I, I wanted to put her quotes and be like, and this is why I don't feel bad about eviscerating this movie. Like, you always got the people out there, uh, no names, where it's like, you know, people worked hard on this, and you got to be nice. You don't know what happened. And I'm like, yeah, the people that worked on this, knew that this was mm. bullshit and they literally just navigated it to get to the next step and used our box office money to get there very quickly mm. like she's seeming like the smartest actress in her generation like she read the immaculate script 10 years ago and went i want to do that so she produced it to get like her own movie made and then it's like in madam webb to get access to do these other roles and like mm-hmm. she was just in what's going to be on most people's worst of the year that was weeks ago, and it she went completely unfazed and has mm-hmm. now made it seem like, oh, well played, Sydney. Yeah, you outmaneuvered Sony. Like she just seems like she figured out the secret code by starring in a crappy movie. She made well, Sony her bitch. Well, plus yeah. people are still talking about um anywhere but here or what was anywhere it? Anywhere but you. you. Anyone but you. Yes, same thing. <laughs> Susan Sarandon, Susan mm-hmm. Sweeney. Uh, so like it. It just didn't phase a dent. I mean, didn't Emma Stone produce p- poor things too? So that like the key to get your film made is just be a producer and and mm-hmm. you you know, all this stuff that um you know guys like you Brad a, Pitt pay has made most too. of his money producing movies mm-hmm. and all these guys that 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 have done that like right you can design your own career if you become the producer and you're the yeah. one guiding this stuff. 
she's like 26 years old and started playing that game several years ago. Like, all right. Yeah. You know mm. what you're doing. Um, so sh- I, Cody, did you see frozen empire yet? No, I'm seeing just tomorrow, Thursday, it's tomorrow, Wednesday, tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday. Okay. I'm seeing it tomorrow. Okay. Um, Sean, you did see, <laughs> I, did. I can't look at him. All right. What, what do you have on? What can I reference? Yeah. <laughs> so, right, uh, right. Sean, Next, you uh, did see topic. frozen empire. <laughs> yeah, did. Um, I looked at these numbers and it's kind of interesting oh that God. the releases oh sorry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> goody bag <laughs> so uh, it, their strongest release uh for opening weekend is the 2016 ghostbusters that's 46 million yeah um and they've never had a movie that wasn't really in some sort of big weekend um before you talk about the film itself do you think it has a chance to eclipse 46 million this weekend i'm not feeling it i don't i don't feel like the the buzz is there okay Just even little tweets and stuff i've seen on the the twitters uh the the interest level uh, i think is passed a little bit this these trailers i don't think have excited people yeah. um i think people are getting bored with nostalgia there's that definitely that it's so i it, yeah it's just whatever that set of things is to where like yeah the, you watch the trailer and you go hey look that's this that's the the new york library lion or whatever hey look mm-hmm. that's the librarian from the first ghostbusters that that doesn't win people over and i think they they even picked some of the wrong details to focus on in the trailers that oh. um didn't didn't necessarily capture what actually kind of makes it a little bit more interesting and uh, I, it feels a little bit more member berries than the actual movie is with yeah with it's fan film shit that, no uh, well, I mean, you watch the trailer and it's like, look, there's the library, looks the librarian, look, it's the little Stay Puft Marshmallow Men. But like, those are the things in the movie. Like, it's not like the rest of the movie, I think, is kind of expanding the lore and does other stuff. But they, they okay. picked all of the details that put it kind of in that, oh, it's just another nostalgia bait film. Haven't we already done this? Mm-hmm. How um, funny is the movie? Because the trailer, at least the first one, really, I, don't, I remember it really having a whole, whole lot of jokes in it. That kind of being a hubble at the time. Uh, so i think that the i mean it's so like afterlife Mm -hmm. has a weight on it because it's all about the death of one of the right uh ghostbusters his faults as a as a parent all of this because the actor died so there's like a a somberness to that film that's not on this movie okay and so it's able to be more playful and fun okay um the first trailer they put out starts off with kind of the 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 city freezing over and like that happens like 75% of the way through the movie. Oh. So it, it like they picked like a the thing that's like very deep into the film and made that half the, the trailer is like look yeah. people are at the beach. Look it freezes over and so it just it doesn't really capture the vibe of the film. It's it's like about an investigation in the city and kind of the lore and the what the things it's, it's like all this other stuff and and so the, the marketing I don't think it did it too many favors like I liked it but that's because I'm I'm I mean I have a lower back tattoo of Peter <laughs> Bankman as I think I imagine you guys all do too but of course I'm that that oh man on the Ghostbusters um, but I mean I, I I think the the marketing on this one uh, let it down to the the masses that's unfortunate i I think it's weird that uh bill murray infamously didn't want to do a third ghostbusters Mm -hmm. and here over the last eight years he's done three ghostbusters movies it it, like is that go on so i just listened to the uh, audiobook that's on the making of the movies and it's really fascinating because of it's almost as if you can see the the shift of his is that he was so adamantly opposed to it for 20 years but then when it stopped being about them and he's just like showing up for someone else's thing for, for, you know, two days of shooting or whatever, all of a sudden he's like, Oh sure. I'll take your money. But it, like it was like such like, as soon as it's not, it doesn't hurt him. If it's a mess, he it was like, he didn't care. Um, but yes, yeah, so, like I saw it last night and it, the theater was filled with, it was actually the, the Austin branch of the ghostbusters. Apparently that's a real thing. Oh yeah. It yeah. suits 
bat, the San Antonio branch was there too. Um, they looked like they could fight ghosts. I don't know if their proton packs actually worked though. <laughs> everyone I talked to, and I like, I was, you know, getting people's audience reactions. Everyone in the theater really enjoyed the film. Hmm, um, cool. okay. but like, I think it's distinctly not as strong as afterlife. Afterlife's wow. Rotten Tomato score was in the 60s, which mm -hmm. I thought was probably about 20% lower than made sense to me. Okay. So if you factor in the fact that critics seem to be a little bit more negative than makes logical sense to some of us on the recent Ghostbusters films, and you add 15, 20% onto its current score, it gets to around 60, 65%. And I go, I, you know, that, that would seem fair and reasonable to me for this film. Okay. I like it more than that, but like that, that, that would be reasonable to me. Okay. I wonder you, if the end of Afterlife is because it was the end of Afterlife was really confused. Is it like going to be the kids? Is it the new crew? Like I'm not even really sure. Is it like a hybrid of the kids and the old crew? Like, yeah, and like, I think it integrates it yeah. really well. I, like, oh, it does. It, there's okay. too many okay. characters. Okay. I'd say mm -hmm. that there, yeah. um, because you have all of the ghost, like all you know, our original Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. Janine Peck returning. You have oh, Peck. the new characters, even Podcast and Lucky. Like the two side friends, they find an excuse as to why they're in L.A. Then we're adding Patton Oswalt, Kumal Nanjiani, a couple other people in there. It's just too many characters. There's too many yeah. subplots. But like the the way the actual plot works, where um, like Ray is still has his little store of stuff. He's right down the road to like be a mentor. He's he's kind of like the the proud grandpa. Um, as the post credit scene made it clear, um, Winston is now like really successful. So he's, he's kind of the CEO of the Ghostbusters empire. Um, oh, and so then like, there's like, he ties it, like he ties into it in that sense of like the person that's kind of guiding it is like the stable person in all of it. Um, but then the, you know, the people that are putting on jumpsuits most of the time, it's the, you know, it's the new generation, but um, like the actual integration itself, I think is really smooth. The script could have used another pass to like, all right, do we need podcast mm. in New York City for this movie? Do like this? Do we need that side character, or can we leave him out? Do we need three new comedians stepping in here, or can we just add one comedian? Mm -hmm. So interesting. Okay. Yeah, it's it's odd because. Uh, for as much noise as everybody was making in 2016, you know, the movie that people, ev everybody just wants to forget about, you know, even the, the timeline, just, nothing happened then, don't worry about it. That was the strongest one as far as box office is, is concerned. And like, you don't hear anything as far as, you know, the, the squeaky wheel, so to speak, about how excited or not they are for Ghostbusters. Do you guys think that's... Is it? A strong... I would assume. I would assume Ghostbusters Afterlife would have made significantly more money if it wasn't following Lady Ghostbusters. Right. I think that Probably. some of that was COVID too. No, possibly. COVID possibly. Was, it was. It was a couple months before No Way Home, so it was. It was hurt a little bit by that, and I think also Lady Ghostbusters was boosted by it was just the first Ghostbusters movie in twenty seven years. years. Yeah, that's so what I mean. If, you, you remove that from an existence and you do afterlife without the hurt of 2016. You just do that movie that and remove COVID who knows what the numbers would have been. That's true. But it's, it's, it's a weird history. Yeah, also, it's... I, I, oh, uh, I, sorry. Quick question, Charles, uh, the numbers you put up a second ago of the box office for the, uh, yeah. So is that 14 and 29 million? Is that adjusted or not adjusted? It's not adjusted. Those are just, data I, I release like, with with their uh, adjusted uh, 84 might be pretty close okay yeah because i wonder like how, like yeah would it be closer or more or less but okay interesting and then yeah, okay right, okay the worst I, I movies get the more money it makes yeah <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. in 1989 yeah. i think what was it batman 89 opened at like 38 million 40 million opening weekend and that was the biggest opening weekend that was a ever. big deal yeah. yeah so you think 40 million was the biggest ever the same mm -hmm. summer that 29 million like 29 million was a great number mm -hmm. um that's 89 uh summer 89 not 88 correct mm. i think Gosh. uh because i just yeah. listened to the book about it <laughs> oh, oh right, right. Okay. yeah i think uh i'm curious what this one's gonna make i do think that something that hurts it um i was discussing with this with somebody on twitter the other day uh afterlife kind of had a bit of a force awakens problem 
yes. where yeah. where some people feel like it relied too heavily on the first film and Same nostalgia shit. and yeah. And and I'm one of those people. I enjoyed that, and I think it. Unfortunately, because of the the reception of 2016, it's like they had to do that. It's like you know, you have to have. I don't know if they need to go as far as they did with literally having the same villain, hmm. but they had to rely on a lot of that for kind of like mending fences and putting band aids on what people didn't like about 2016. So I'm curious on this being marketed and most of the reviews whether the positive or negative saying that this is the first ghostbusters movie that feels like distinctly different if that's going to win over the people that were turned off by how nostalgia fueled the last one was um i think that's so frustrating to me because <laughs> it's true it's not un like if you could say that it's too nostalgic it, and it ties too closely to the original that's true and at the same time it's by far this wildly different thing. It's easily the most character-based Ghostbusters film, the most okay. emotional, heartfelt Ghostbusters film. It's in freaking Oklahoma. There's all these things about it that are so wildly different. Mm -hmm. But especially as you move into the back half of the film, two people turn into dogs. They they, they get. It's weird the same climax. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's like this. Okay, like I. You probably didn't need the, like you could have found a way to do almost all of this and just change this thing and you remove the criticism. It's the uh, same movie. Where where do you guys project? These are the top ten weekends so far in twenty twenty four. Look at the bottom, Madam Web. Um, oh, that's cute. Where would you say it would fall in? <laughs> Sorry, wait. Let me get you up there. Oh. He's got more. He's got more. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I know they made 19, little... 1984. Oh. <laughs> I'm not with Sony. You're not getting paid. Sorry. Ah, man. <laughs> so uh, I gave the movie a good review. So, so, I, so I Sony to invite me to the premiere or something. Where, where would you... It put it if you had a gamble on opening weekend for Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, where on this list do you think it would be once the weekend's over? Um, I think Lindsay, it's you go depend. First. Oh. oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I think it's going to depend on what legs Kung Fu Panda 4 has, which I don't have any radar for. They've been good. It's had, had yeah. good legs. Both Dune 2 and Kung Fu Panda have had very solid legs. Okay. Well, I, I, I feel like Ghostbusters is one of those movies that people would want to take their kids to, so I think it might take a chunk out of that. Mm. Um, okay. So I would... I, I'm going to hope for second. I don't think it's going to oh, overtake wow. Dune. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's getting 82. Yeah. Wait, yeah I was about to is, say, so 82 is the most recent for Dune, so you half that again, 41. Like, yeah, that's... It's not... Well, no... Um, Oh, wait, the I most recent for Dune ones. is uh, oh, it's March first. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. Kung Fu Panda uh, and Dune have just been kind of going back and at. forth. Yeah, uh, they're so. they're the weekends. So on the far right there, it's mm -hmm. it's the weekend date. So March eighth is represented by like you know do overs. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean for for opening weekend, I would expect it to. It, it's going to land somewhere somewhere in the 30s or 40s so it's going to be somewhere in there uh towards yeah, I, the top, I don't think but... it's going to hit that same number as afterlife or, or um 2016 so i'm mm. guessing it's going to yeah. be in the 30s Under 40. I, i'm not surprised okay. if it's right at 30. okay linda i just not feeling the energy and excitement i mean hmm. I, I mean the excitement but i'm not feeling it from others yeah, I just I just don't see anyone really talking about the movie that much online so you know what i'm going to be the super negative nancy it's going to be in the 20s hmm well, I'm 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 going to be wrong, but well, it's in the twenties. Well, I mean, it, I it's kind of like I don't think you're crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, plus it's it's going against Dune and Kung Fu Panda, which really haven't fallen and off immaculate. that much. That's true. Oh yeah, yeah Sydney Sweeney, uh, Teflon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this will play into it too. There hasn't really been too many blockbuster type movies this year aside from dune so i don't know if maybe people are, are hungry for more of that i mean we got godzilla a week later and and got in a uh, uh, ghostbusters is a fun blockbuster dune yeah. isn't like a popcorn blockbuster yeah, yeah. so that's really right. the first like family blockbuster of the year so if it gets a boost from that it's possible yeah do you think do you think with godzilla versus kong the week after do you think it 
it needs to make the bulk of its money this week? Ghostbusters, yes. I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, Godzilla is another one that I can't put a finger on the yeah. pulse for because it feels like everybody in unison like hates those movies while also like looking forward to hating it. So I don't yeah. know. I yeah, don't like know candy. what that just, means. I don't care if it's bad for me. Yeah. Just give it to me. It looks <laughs> like Godzilla. Just stupid you know, as shit. Right. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> yeah. They're not doing a press screening in Austin for it, which Ooh. is fascinating. Yeah, I was yeah. surprised that they didn't, they didn't premiere do a press that. screening for the Meg 2 either. Huh. Well, that was Which, the best movie I, ever. And I intentionally pick the Meg 2 as my same studio point of reference. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, because, I mean, Godzilla, which I haven't seen yet because they haven't released it physically yet, minus one. I've heard nothing. Like, people, it shocked people how good it was. And that was a Japanese language film. Yeah. Uh, and people were just wowed by that. And to follow it up with more teeth rot from warner it's just it's it's fascinating yeah Sir, there's not it, one big monkey in this but two and and then a baby big monkey okay <laughs> it's gonna do fine okay <laughs> i think it's interesting monkey. that they have like serious foreign godzilla and then yeah. like stupid american godzilla yeah. like for different <laughs> audiences but i just i mean i going all the way back to the gareth edwards movie i haven't seen any of these movies get like really that wild of a claim like every one of them are divisive at best mm. and lambasted at worst and so i just i don't know i i'm not a kaiju person so it's hard for me to really comment on it i was but one you, of those people that was shocked by minus right, one right so like you know it, it doesn't have to be a traditionally whatever genre film mm -hmm. for people to like it like like you just said you were surprised by it so how about you just make good movies what, what happened mm -hmm. to that yeah I, and I like don't Kong put politics Skull. and everything. Shit. <laughs> Sorry, Lindsay. No, I like Kong Skull Island. Like, I think that's like the pinnacle of this. This little like mini franchise. Is that the seventies one? No, no, no. The, the the new one. The the newest one. Yeah, no, the one no. Yeah, Samuel Jackson. The movie takes place. Oh in yes, yes. Sorry, yeah. I, I apologize. That's and Brie Larson was in it last week. Brie Larson was in it. Yeah, she is in that movie. Yeah. So there's a lot of uh Marvel. People. There's a lot of Marvel in that movie. Mm. There's so many cool shots in that movie. It's so pretty. So many cool shots. It's so pretty. Yeah, that was before all of this. That was before all of the Versus movie. It was not setting up the universe. That it was movie? second. It, it, it was second. right after Godzilla. And then we got Godzilla King of the Monsters and then Godzilla Kong. Which is I kind of um, okay. It also so, had a podcast character, though, like Ghostbusters Afterlife. <laughs> relatable. Very around. relatable. <laughs> so, it's a theme uh, running through all of this. I know. Uh, Cody, you made a video on the news regarding Nev Campbell mm -hmm. joining the Scream 7 production. The thing that I think is fascinating is the fact that Kevin Williamson's coming back to direct, but, but not right. Right. <laughs> I know. And, That's the weird thing. Like, if he was doing both, I would be like, hell yeah. I'm actually excited about that. That's cool. But the fact that he's letting the people that have done the last two chapters that have been actually been kind of divisive with fans seemingly mm -hmm. and also the their climax of their story has now been you know snuffed out it seems weird that somebody else is writing it not that he might not have some con creative control with the direction of the story i really don't know but yeah. um yeah i mean he he's directed one movie i've seen it i remember jack shit about it so teaching mrs tingle it's, yeah it, and it, he wrote it too. like it's it's ah. yeah so and like there's something poetic and cool about him kind of coming to take the reins um that's something that fans can get excited for it also feels a little manipulative like a little pr stunt like the fans right. will, get, will forgive right. us for if we do this uh but well, him not writing was very weird. desperate yes it's, it, plus it feels they backwards are desperate, so I, but it doesn't mean it's a bad choice but it feels very desperate mm -hmm. right but it also feels backwards how many times do we say that oh if you make a rob zombie movie let him direct don't let him touch a pen yeah. And this is like the right. inverse of that, where it's just like, what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's the weird thing about it. Like, yeah, that that I don't know. That whole announcement was just weird. Yeah. I mean, it just it's it's something that if they had announced it seven months ago, we would all be excited about it. But mm -hmm. after all of the nonsense, it's impossible mm -hmm. to be because there's just so much baggage attached to it. There's so many questions. There's mm -hmm. there's so much like ickiness around it, where it's like, you know, th th this is Nev Campbell's franchise. It should. And she's only been gone for one movie. That's the other thing too. Like it's like Nev Campbell returns. It's like she took one break. 
she was gone for <laughs> one movie. One movie. <laughs> uh, you know, and so it's 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 odd to me. It 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 just yeah. all I see is the PR side of it. All I see is the the damage control side of it. Are and, any of the newer characters going to be in this one? Are, they, are we going to see the core four again, or is it just well, going to be them, like two of them are out? Right. Oh no. Until yeah. yeah. So I, that's what I, I, I meant the, 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 the two that is are that still guy in. That like, can like get yeah, yeah. stabbed a million times. Like, yeah. And he lives. Getting Junior's son and the the new Randy. I don't. I don't know. I would assume yeah. that they would have announced them by now. That's true. Uh, right. I, I, I'm assuming if this is focusing on Nev Campbell, they haven't announced Courtney Cox, and I feel like if they had her, they would have announced her along with her. That's a good point. I'm thinking maybe they're shifting focus to wherever the hell Sydney's at which is away from everybody else. And, you know, best case scenario, you have a movie with her. And then later on, if fences are mended, we go back and finish with the other characters and Nev Campbell. I mean, I, I don't know what the hell they're going to do, but all we know now is it's happening still. Nev's there and Kevin's directing. I don't know yeah. if it's a brand new script. I guess it would have to be. Yeah. But um, no, the, the, it's the, it's Nev's actually playing Miss Melissa Barrera's character. And now <laughs> she, she's not playing court. <laughs> well, so it it came out like in August of twenty two, maybe twenty three. That the the reason that Nev gave for not signing on for six was that she was doing it because of gender pay issues, which yeah. is a unique stand. But considering all the controversy surrounding what was going on with seven um does she not have any respect for the two females that were one was fired and one and quit that's, granted that's taken over the conversation online right. and, okay. it, and we just don't know enough like i said it in my my video like I, it's hard to take a stance that she did mm -hmm. in the sixth film for why she wouldn't you know, be disrespected that way. I think it was kind of the the, the terminology that was being used, mm. just kind of being devalued, and then come back come back the next film and be totally okay with the other star being devalued and, and quite literally branded as anti Semitic and trying to have her career ruined, which is even right. worse than just not it's paying so you enough. Right. Uh, so it's odd to take that stance, and then you you really have it diluted when you come back and you're okay with all of that, seemingly, uh, or at least you don't make it very clear that you're not okay with that at the same time i guarantee she probably got double the amount of money that she would have ever expected oh. to make from these movies for her to come back and several I don't, trucks. I don't fault her for that like i said in my video like this like it's her franchise she might have been pissed off about not being the lead anymore and now she's getting paid significantly more because they stepped in shit and she's like whatever sucks for you i'll, I'll sign that check i don't fault her for that uh, but I do think that it's weird and uh, it, it's it's a situation that it's hard for fans to really know where they're going to stand on it because there's just so much of oddness around it. There, there's so much that we don't know about who feels about what and, and everything else. What about the rest of Radio Silence? The the guys that made the last two, are they still going to be involved or is it they're producers? They're, pretty, they're still producing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I wonder, yeah, they, yeah, could the movie be about the Overlook oh, sorry. Festival? Mm -hmm. One more time. They'll be hanging out with me and Cody at the Overlook Film Festival. Yes, oh, that's sick. That's where yes, so with their their vampire ballerina that. film and Melissa yes. Barrera, and we're going to ask her then. Yes, we'll be. Please do. Melissa, her How do you feel about Nev it? and the dump ready? truck full of money they just gave her? <laughs> yeah, so just have us back in a month. We'll clear yeah. all of this up. Yeah, record it though, I, on footage. Footage or it didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. I, I, she she released a I think it was an Instagram post when she signed on saying mm -hmm. that, you know, they were gracious with with the picture with the script. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I read then. I, you know, don't it was a picture of the script on Instagram. Scream seven directed by Kevin Williamson. And then Kevin Williamson, the exact same picture with his blurb. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that seems PR. -y. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the whole thing does. That's the thing. Like yeah. it's if it, I'm one of those people that I was not super upset that Nev was not in six. I know that was a big point of contention for fans. For me, I was already kind of feeling like these characters were played out in five. Uh, and <laughs> five proved to me that we have these new characters. I mean, Nev and Courtney Cox didn't even show up until the last 20 minutes of the movie. Dewey was the big star of that one. 
um to me it was time to to pass the torch so when they got to six and it was like they didn't pay me enough and i i was was always curious i'm like did they not pay you enough because your role was going to be this big but you wanted it to be lead actress money like there were so many questions that i had that we never really got the answer to um but even that side of it it's not something that i can get super excited about because it's like another scream movie with ghostface versus sydney i love sydney i love what nev does but we've got four of those movies what else is there to do right i mean jamie lee curtis is this scream queen and even she ducked away from the halloween franchise for for pockets at a time so <laughs> it's I, I i don't i wouldn't put sydney on the level of jamie lee curtis and jamie lee curtis has done it in other places say what you want about uh television and um wild things but i i don't really think of nev campbell as somebody who can carry a movie whereas john jamie lee your curtis... favorite franchise is scream what's your thoughts <laughs> <laughs> um my feeling is that built into the scream universe is a thousand ways to take this franchise away from Sydney or whoever else. Like you can Woodsboro, no. whatever you, you can do whatever you want with it. When you build Scream into the universe and you have a very meta franchise, it's built in to be able to do all sorts of wild and crazy things. Uh, the the idea of it is the star, not the stars. Ghostface is an idea, not mm -hmm. a character. Mm -hmm. And Ghostface can be the ghost face of stab or inspired by the real murders so you can go and do all sorts of weight wild crazy outside the box ideas you you don't need it to be anchored to the original murders anymore and you can do something interesting creative and cl clever with all of this you start straining credibility at a certain point in time when it's like how many times are they coming after sydney yeah before she's just going to move into a gated community walk around with an Uzi and they're, they're trying to make it clear that she does that. Like, do, do you own a gun? I'm sitting in Of course I own a gun. Like they made it clear. Like she's walking around packing heat strapped. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're just straining at a certain point in time. And um, not only that, but how many times these characters survive these encounters? Mm. Right. Yeah. Like how many, yeah. How many times that like, it's you, you start to like, it just becomes predictable. Either we're going to kill off an old member or you should have killed the person off, but, they're gonna be okay like um just a lot of problems with, with if you try and stretch all of this out too much um but yeah. after you fired melissa and ortega's like bye I... you have to do you in that context you can't just go well actually we wanted to go to florida and tell a story about someone inspired by the stab movies it's it's very much it's in continuity but it's a creative reinvention you can't do that like because obviously you're doing that because your stars quit um mm. or you fired one of them and so mm -hmm. all of a sudden you have to do something to try and win people back and do something that feels exciting so then what are the two names that you can grab well on the and you lost your director your director was like this was my dream job and it turned into a nightmare Wow. When your director really? publicly says that over the crap that you did, you've got a PR nightmare. So what do you do? You bring back the original star and you bring back the original creative force. Mm. But they're in these entirely superficial roles where it's like, you know, there's weird stuff with Nev and that it's over money and Kevin Williamson isn't writing. <laughs> so, like, like you just look at it and you immediately go, uh, something's weird here. Yeah. Well, plus the other thing, the, the unique thing about the Scream franchise has always been the element of that meta. Yeah. Like, hey, we know we're, if you were in a movie, blah, blah, blah. Do you think maybe it's stale by this point? Like, how much more can you do that? Like, they know they're in a movie. Well, unquote. there really wasn't much commentary in the last one. The fifth one was very clever at kind of attacking, like, the legacy. toxic, mm -hmm. toxic yeah, fandom so and the there, legacy yeah. and remakes and reboot quills and everything. Six felt very much like a, a, a kind of a, a like Sean like a carte blanche movie. Like we could just kind of do whatever. Let's see what happens. And most of it worked for me. A lot of it didn't in the third act. But there wasn't a, like a strong theme of yeah. commentary in the last one. So now 
unless they get ultra meta and they start like just you know talking about pay disputes and, <laughs> like <laughs> unceremonious firing and that's what Ghostface's motivation is and it's Melissa Barrera oh. at the end of it or like I don't know yeah, like you should pitch these oh. ideas because that if they did that yeah <laughs> they'd be like the greatest bizarro meta commentary of all time roasting themselves Indeed. over firing their lead actress. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, would that be that extreme for Scream? I mean, look at Scream Three. They're like, you, you had Carrie Fisher just literally looking into the camera and talking about sexual abuse in Hollywood, and that's what the whole movie's. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it, 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 well, if it Kevin was writing it, maybe. Yeah. Right. But although okay, he didn't write fair. Scream Three, so <laughs> oh, <he laughs> there, there's that. Uh, he, that. you know, he got credit for the characters, but he yeah, gets one, that, two, you know, and all four of them. is all he's yeah. done. Right, yeah. Here you go. Right, well, right, one more uh, time. Ethan Cohen guy. Not the Ethan Cohen, not of the Cohen brothers. Or the no, the one that did Top Gun Maverick and some Transformers movies. Oh, oh, okay. Cohen brother. C O H E N. The, the, -E -N. the, uh, the other Ethan Cohen. Yeah, the one that confusing. tricked uh, Bill Murray to be Garfield. Right. There's some confusion yeah. sometimes with uh these Cohens. <laughs> um uh guys to our our guests, uh do we are are you good on time? Do you want to uh, take off or yeah, do you want to stick I around for a topic? Take off. You have okay. a final question for me. If we can loop back real quick to South by Southwest, a couple okay. quick throwouts okay. real quick and talk about Ooh. some of this. Ah. Uh, Arcadian, it's a Nicolas Cage post-apocalyptic movie, very much in the vein of uh, A Quiet Place minus the sound gimmick. Very cool creature designs in this one. Like, Wait, wait, wait. A Quiet Place minus the sound gimmick? Yeah, so it's post-apocalyptic creatures, people trying to survive. So like the, um, like it's, post yeah, so. creatures are out there movie. I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so it just, you don't have the sound thing, but it's like, you know, there's night, there's, it has its own little deals to it. Very mm -hmm. family centric dynamic. So it's it, like, oh, in that okay. sense, like a quiet place. So it's like very family oriented and how they're responding afterwards. Uh, creature, they do some cool stuff with the creatures. That's what everyone talked about coming out of that movie. Y2K, it's a, uh, from, was it Mooney? Uh, was it Kyle Mooney? So SNL guy. And so it's about, y2k night and the y2k bug the first 20 minutes play like okay it's like a comedy where we went hey look remember aol discs hey look remember dial up hey remember when the 1999 naked... <laughs> remember in 99 when to look at naked people on the internet you'd have to wait for five minutes for a picture to load like that's the humor for the first 30 minutes and then it just goes into bonkers mode there's some cameos in this movie that was like I, I don't even want to say who was in the room on stage afterwards just in case like it's able to keep it secret till the movie comes out. But again, hmm. like wild, violent, insane, and funny. So okay. the first 30 minutes, like, eh, and then it gets it's pretty good and wild. Wait, so um, is it like a what if Y2K like actually happened kind of movie, but it's like in a funny way? Is that what it is? Or yeah, it, but in the extreme sense. Like I like okay. It's, okay. I, I knew nothing, so I don't okay. like I didn't know. I just went into it. Y two K comedy. I thought it was going to be just like a Y two K um, party movie, just okay. nostalgia bait movie, and then midnight hits, and then the like it. I, I don't know. I don't think this is like the, the all technology starts trying to kill everyone. Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm so down. Like, so like the lights flicker off and they're like, what just happened? And then a ceiling fan kills somebody like that. Like that's what the movie does. And there's a, there's a, a, a cameo in this movie from, from a musician. Ooh. One of the best cameos that like, just where they go with this. And, and it's like the, like what they do with this, like. <laughs> is it Scott Stapp? Josh, uh, I don't want to know who it is. <laughs> I, I don't, don't want to answer the question, but like, we, but yes. like um, it, we're, we're talking hey, about that level of people know who this person is, and mm -hmm. they were in the room, and it was oh, like, wow. oh, like the, what is going on right now? Like it, it was, it was so so fun. But hmm. like I said, the first, like it, the first part, it starts off a little bit like, eh, okay, right, that's what ninety nine was like, and then it gets wild. <laughs> um and then the other one to talk about Azrael. this was written by the guy that did your next Ooh. and it's uh basically post-apocalyptic um people are trying to survive and there's samara weaving <laughs> and i normally love these types of movies love samara weaving horror i didn't like it like it might be my least favorite that i saw out of 14 movies oh, wow. uh, were you expecting to like it though 
I, I mean, I go in expecting like every, almost everyone else was more positive than I was. Everyone, oh man, it was it was awesome and paid off. And da, 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 I get da. nervous whenever they do the the no dialogue gimmick because I really yeah. did not enjoy Silent Night. Mm. Um, so, but so in the case of this one, it's you know it's just another post apocalyptic. There's creatures roaming among us. They're like burnt people, and there's kind of like this. It's after the rapture sort of stuff. So there's all this biblical imagery and. Uh, it kind of tied into it, but there's no dialogue. And, you know, it's there's the creatures out there, but then, you know, really the other humans are more dangerous than the things that are out there. It's it's the same thing that Walking Ooh. Dead did for a million years and everyone else has done. <laughs> but the thing that distinguishes it is its lore, that it, it's after the rapture and there's like a pregnant lady and like, is this going to be the chosen baby or whatever? But there's no dialogue. So you it can't elaborate on any of the lore. It can't yeah. elaborate on any of the stuff going on. Hate that. And so there's like, like you don't even know. Like, are these two people we're following that are, are good guys? Did they leave the tribe? Why are they there? You meet some other people that aren't a part of all of this. That, and it, you you don't have enough information to be able, like it just doesn't. It's not able to add up. Is the gimmick natural though, to where it's not distracting, or is it like Silent Night, where you're like, why is nobody speaking? This is stupid. Uh, no, so in it, um. Like it, it says at the beginning, basically, uh, after the rapture, people, um, like chose not to speak as the punishment for their spin, sin of speech or something like that, and so everyone has a scar right here, that's in okay. these tribes. So they've removed their vocal cords, oh, uh, wow. uh, which isn't stated in the movie, but you can see that there's a scar there on all the people that aren't talking. Okay. Um, and and so there's part where they're like. Ah! doing that stuff but like they hmm. they can't talk but it, once again some of that's explained in the interview afterwards that you will not have actually hmm. cody you might have it because it's playing it over like um and then you, um i don't i don't think this is really a spoiler but you you in, you'd meet some people in the movie that don't that have vocal cords that talk um that like there's a there, there's an element to this so there's all of these different people out there but because you don't get enough information to understand how it all fits together, why why are all we all these people here and why why there's like a mm -hmm. lot of why 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 and this it's too close of a space to have Ooh. this level of ignorance. Is, that is it is it close? Sorry, Cody. Is it closer to an A twenty four comedy or a it's Platinum comedy. Dunes comedy? Yeah, that's what I was I, horror, 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 horror. Horror, horror, horror. I apologize. Okay. I apologize. It, like uh, I mean, it, you know, it's it's more it's you know it's probably A twenty four in the sense. Okay. Well, I mean, it, I, I mean, it's like. When I saw that it was done by the the guy that did your next at the end of it, I went, "Oh, okay, that makes sense." Because it's like a pretty you're confined to a fairly narrow space. You know, this lady keeps kind of going into this camp, and it's kind of that, you know close quarters survival thriller type stuff, survival okay. horror in a limited space. So that yeah, I think your next is probably a good point of reference for it mm -hmm. in that regard. But you know, it's not a twenty four in the sense of it like it's trippy and it's um you know psychological. It's not really that. It's like survival thriller like you're trying not to get caught by that burning creature person or that tribe of wackos that want to sacrifice me to the gods or something like that like it, it's that survival type of story and you know brutal visceral type of stuff but it's not like you know platinum dune slick mm. um well thank you for uh cody do we have you for a little bit longer you, you leave him too i can hang out for a little bit longer okay cool. all right sean do you have anything coming up on Thanks. your channel that you want to plug to my tiny audience <laughs> all right well it's, uh hopefully friday my actual ranking of all the the movies that i saw at south by southwest so my organized version of that so more if you want to hear more about all 14 movies that i saw at south by southwest and my ranking of how much i enjoyed each of them really I, I enjoyed almost everything and like i didn't like Azrael that much but my takeaway was like i want to see it again to see if i like it more like it was an interesting sort of i didn't like it and then i think like roadhouse is like number 13 or 12 on my ranking something like that and i had hmm. fun with roadhouse so okay. i had a good south by southwest of like um saw a bunch of stuff i enjoyed but that's coming up in a couple of days that's that's probably the big interesting one i think cool Thank you, Sean. Thank you for joining us. Peace out, dude. Bye. Nice Bye. to meet you. So, I guess we have the leftovers now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the alien teaser dropped. Mm -hmm. The alien Romulus, the 58 second teaser dropped today. Um, Lindsay, I don't know if I asked you before we went on, did you see that? The alien I, 
I didn't, but if it's only 58 seconds long, maybe I'll just watch it right now. Like right. Cody thoughts. Uh, I've already been really excited for this movie. I think Fide Alvarez is the perfect person to do it. And ever since we saw Prey two years ago, I've been excited Ooh. about the the lessons, hopefully, that will be learned from Prey on how to revisit some of these franchises that we've seen go off the rails. Um, the teaser gave me everything that I could have wanted. Uh, more than anything, I just like the fact that it's old school movie marketing where it's mm. just tone, atmosphere, tension a little bit of excitement and that's it you don't get to know plot you don't get to know characters there's not really dialogue it just gives you what you need to say there's an alien movie bitch get ready and that's it and i miss that like i've had to actively stop watching horror trailers unless i just can't avoid it because i've had too many movies ruined for me and there's been some like uh even even abigail we talked about it briefly earlier the 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 uh, radio silence movie coming out i watched the trailer for that and even though i'm very excited for it and i think by the time i see the movie most of my images in my head will be gone that felt like the whole movie prepackaged in two minutes and that's what so many trailers sans blumhouse now uh that feel like it's just here's here's the movie crunched into two minutes first third uh first second and third act and maybe even a shot from the ending and i just get so sick of that like I, i'm at the point now where if the premise sells me I'll actively avoid the trailer and mm -hmm. alien Romulus is one of those trailers that you can actually watch it and know nothing besides there's a movie coming out and get excited for it. And I just, I love that. Also yeah. slightly traumatizing. I literally just watched it. Some of that imagery was pretty crazy. I'm yeah. super down for this. Holy I God. like, I like that the teaser opened up. Listen, you don't see anything graphic, but you see like the after effects of somebody getting their, their shit pushed and just in sound design. You, yeah, yeah, like it, you know, they don't show anything too crazy, but you see this bloody sleep chamber thing, and it's just like, hmm, a bit more gruesome. I would say somewhere after Aliens, mm -hmm. where it's it's just, you know, it doesn't show you anything other than like uh, face huggers jumping after somebody in a hallway. But other than that, it's, it's that was a great shot. They did that twice. Those were good. Uh, yeah, oh, I like the one with the thing yeah. coming out. Like, yeah, that was the one that kind of kinda made me. Uh, <laughs> Okay. To me, it harkens back to the tone of Alien in a good way. Because I am one of those people that prefers Aliens, but you're not going to out Aliens James Cameron, so nobody's ever bothered trying. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I didn't really care for what Ridley Scott did. Uh, so this, to me, feels like we're going back to the beginning in a way that, that most people will be pleased with. Cool. Hopefully. Yeah. I like yeah. And also, maybe this just makes I'm watching too many Netflix series, but sets... There was a set, like a real set, that just makes me so excited. They actually built the spaceship. I'm sorry, it's simple things. Simple no, things. it it yeah. um, it, it it they when they did Alien Three, uh, that that uh, the the journey that those sets took, uh, you know, that putting something in great, <laughs> yeah, putting something in a green screen, it just yeah, all right, you could do more on the computer, but you know, the actors have more to work with when it when it's right. physically there, so. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people prefer green screen shit, but it just it, it, it's affected in one way or another. Um, it, so Fede Alvarez, who did the the don't uh, he did breathe, Don't Breathe that. and yeah. the Evil Dead remake in 2013, oh, yeah. those are really really good movies. They're quite tense. It, I I never thought somebody could redo evil dead and take it in a completely different different direction and actually be quite a decent movie while doing so but mm -hmm. yeah, that climax of 2013's evil dead is incredible yep. bloodstorm bloodstorm blood. <laughs> cue the slayer yeah, um so uh what it comes the one thing that that i'm worried about in relation to the box office industry is it comes out in August. Yeah. And that kind of doesn't scream confidence to me. Uh I don't think they expect it to be a gigantic hit. This was supposed to be a Hulu movie from what I understand. So they're just kind of oh. taking a chance on it because they like it to put it in theaters to begin with. Um, I didn't pray get a theatrical release. I'll never I'd, not be upset about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the maybe you could pull it up. I don't know what the box office even was for Prometheus or Alien Covenant, but I don't think those were heavy hitters either. So yeah. I think that they they did a modest budget with this one, and I think they have modest expectations. Um, I think they'd be happy if it's if it's awesome, and if it is awesome, 
there's never shit in late August, early September, all the way through to October. So they have a whole month that they can ride of horror fans until uh, we get saw and everything in October. So if it works out for them, that might actually be some really good placement. Like the once in a while where you get something really good in January and it just kicks extra ass because there's nothing else that anybody gives a fuck about. Yeah, I'm, I'm, if you could just scat for a second, I can get you the, the numbers. I wasn't prepared for this discussion. I actually, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I have it right here. Alien Covenant was made for 97 and it made 240. And uh, Prometheus made 400 on a budget of 130. Okay, yeah, so that's worldwide. Yeah. Prometheus, yes, yes, correct, correct, Prometheus correct. was released in June of 12. Alien Covenant was released in May of 17. Opening weekend covenant which was the most recent one was 36 million in may and yeah. prometheus was 51 million in june yeah eh. so, I, I think they have modest expectations with this one uh, you know, yeah. i think that was the that was the right lessons to learn from prey is stop putting 200 million dollars and trying to make these gigantic blockbusters and epic soap operas and stuff it just go back to basics and um that seems to be what they're doing here. You know, Fede Alvarez seems to be one of those directors that works with smaller budgets, modest budgets, and mm. makes some awesome shit out of it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, based on the 50 seconds we saw, do you, wh what do you think it's tying to? The original Aliens? Do you think there's going to be any touch of I read. Or? I read on... Um, Twitter somewhere uh, that hang on, maybe I can pull it up because I think it was we watched a movie who retweeted it. Uh, I read that there it's in canon with all of the movies, but hmm. it's not like required viewing. So that that tells me maybe just an Easter egg here and there. Um, I would assume that if they directly call back to anything, it's probably just going to be the first film, maybe the first two. But uh, okay, so yeah, there was a there was an article by Bloody Disgusting that was uh, sitting down with Fede Alvarez and Mike from We Watched a Movie just put some bullet point like summaries, practical yeah. effects, and bringing back the folks who made Aliens, keep the rest of the franchise canon, yet you can enjoy it even if you've never seen the others, and focuses on horror and action. So okay, hmm. the name Romulus is curious because that's the dude who founded Rome. Or you know the legendary figure who founded Rome and stuff mm -hmm. and, all, and all that. So I wonder. So is this like going to be a super prequel like Prometheus, where it's like an origin of something, or is well, it going to be like a prequel to the first Alien movie? Is it like like you know like like somehow tie into like that Alien ship directly that that that, oh. that Promethean ship directly in the first Alien movie? You know what I mean? Are you saying uh, a sequel to Prometheus and Alien Covenant, but a prequel to Alien? Yeah, like like more prequel to Alien, but you know, technically a also a sequel. Wikipedia to says yeah. this is set between the events of Alien and Aliens. Oh, okay. okay, that's fascinating. Yeah, I like the one thing they could always go back to is the the ship that they stumble across in Alien. Like that one's always like, if you want to do a prequel, you, you have that story, which mm -hmm. I I don't you know I'm not advocating for it. It's just like you guys love doing backup stories so th there's one just like pre-made for you there could it be what happened to the colony on lv429 Ooh. or whatever i mean we, we we know how that plays out which you know so that wouldn't be the most interesting of things but it could mostly. be fun. most mostly yeah yeah <laughs> is there, is there going to be a newt in this one <laughs> don't give me hope <laughs> get undo three and four you jerks <laughs> yeah, exactly you're gonna get your shit rocked as soon as you fall asleep just so you know little bitch <laughs> um yeah uh, so something i finally watched today was mm -hmm. um madam web um mm -hmm. and out of curiosity because it's it's only been out five weeks i wanted to look at the numbers and wow um i don't think i've seen anything with with a marvel marvel whatever on it be this poor mm -hmm. as far as finances is concerned it that's has society not, telling you to go fuck yourself yeah it has <laughs> not made a hundred million dollars worldwide yet wow and for four wow. hundred thousand in its fifth week it hasn't been a full month yet and it's it's down to four hundred thousand dollars yep. i it, deservedly yeah. so 
Re-release it. Morbius it. Yeah. It's webbing time. It was so <laughs> hilarious that they tricked those dumb fucks into re-releasing Morbius. <laughs> like, we were going to show up the second things. time. Yeah. Morons. We were all busy that weekend. We'll come out this time for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. You were doing it this weekend? My bad. <laughs> Left my oven on. So, it, it, they have to be going back to the drawing, hard, drawing board to a certain degree. Granted, Sony was going to do something regardless to keep that that license live, but yeah, but this has to be a, a cautionary tale of sorts, no? I don't know, man. I mean, they they're they're in a spot where they can't really do shit because they've got two other movies coming out this year, well, and Craven so it's, it's almost one? like uh, they have Craven the Hunter and Venom Three. Venom Three. That's and cool. so, I mean, I just I just don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like, I was one of those people that when they were announcing this, I was actually for the idea. I was like, this makes sense. Like, they're gonna go, they're gonna do these little villain origin stories, and we're gonna build out this world. So that if and when they take Spider-Man back, he comes back and we don't have to spend movies after movies after movies, you know, explaining who all these people are. We could just jump right into Sinister Six and shit like that. It makes sense to me. And I liked the first Venom, but I haven't watched it since theater. So I don't know how much I Hmm. really liked it. Hmm. Did not like Venom 2. Really did not like Morbius and liked Madam Web even less than Morbius, if that was even possible. And uh, I didn't think the trailer for Craven was that interesting, and they still don't even have anything to show for Venom, so that might even be a push to next year. But I just don't know what the fuck they're doing. It's just, I mean, you look at the post credit scene of Morbius; just that by itself is just like, how do you, how do you have a post credit scene <laughs> that makes no sense to anybody, even the ones that are on screen? Like Michael what? Keaton's on record at this point. He's like, I have no idea what the fuck that scene was. They told me <laughs> we were doing this. I showed up. I'm like, can you explain it? They're like, no. Shot it. Left. And so. <laughs> Uh, it's just it just doesn't make any sense and it doesn't give it doesn't give fans any good faith that they can handle tom holland's character if they ever try to like that would be like if they if they ever really wanted to uh, pull their character back they've ruined their credibility by doing these movies well i I guess this is uh, this is me and my lack of knowledge coming in but how does madam web technically tie into other than a spider bites her mom, like how how is this part of Peter Parker's universe or like what? Madam Web is a weird character. Do you know her, Cody? Like the... to a degree. Yeah. Uh, that 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 was. Uh, I kind of watched the Spider Man animated series somewhat, but I was much more into Batman, so I didn't even really have the childhood version of me to. to explore the character, but it didn't even seem like they knew where this was going <laughs> to tie in because. They have all these random fucking characters that are just like Peter Parker cameos and they play coy with mm-hmm. the reveals and like, what's the name of the baby? I don't know. Who could it be? And all the fans are like, yeah, no shit. It's Peter. And then as soon as they go to say the name, they like stop themselves. And it's like, what the, that's the weirdest fucking Easter egg ever. <laughs> and they, I think they were on, they were on record at some point, somebody released about a month before the movie that, uh, this was supposed to be the movie that was going to make, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man canon to this villain verse. And then they realized they fucked up the timeline and it didn't work. So they had to cut that out of the movie and they were going to do Tom Holland. But then they realized that didn't make sense either because of the script. So they just removed all of it. And it's like, this is your house. These are your (laughs) fucking movies. You don't have the Blu-rays like sitting on the back shelf somewhere at Sony. Like it's on fucking Netflix. Just pull it up. Like what the hell? How do you fuck that up? That's amazing. Yeah. Uh. Wow! No, I we're gonna bring Andrew Garfield back. Oh fuck! This is in modern times. Um, shit. Never mind. Cut all that out. Like, <laughs> how does that happen? Like, I get kind of you know flying by the yeah. seat of your pants, but like at some point you have to wonder like, is it just a sunk cost fallacy at this point, and we just like you know just let the money go and just stop? Like when when I see, I'm far enough removed from. Like uh, superhero movies, I'm just I'm spent. Uh, like, yeah, right. if if I don't have to go anywhere to see it, I'll see it. I'm not I'm not going to the theater at this point. But there was a point during Madam Web where it felt like if somebody typed in, give me a summary of X Men characters, but make it female. Like she looked like Cyclops sitting in Professor X's chair at one portion, and was just a, a different character, you know, a di- different gender, should I say? And I was like this is this is like a fever dream i don't understand granted she's based on somebody else but it just felt very 
I don't know, I don't know, diluted of stuff we've already seen before, at least in movies. But and not only that, but they pulled the bait and switch shit with the marketing again. So like when they did Morbius, they had all these Spider-Man <laughs> things in the trailer. Like they had a graffiti of um yeah. uh, Toby Maguire's Spider-Man with murderer spray painted across it, like directly in the trailer with him like running and pulling his shirt off like fucking Superman. And so they got rid of all that. It wasn't even in the movie and everybody was bitching. They're like, is this false advertising? Like, is can somebody sue for this? Cause you're, <laughs> you're, you're showing me shit. It's not even in the movie. You watch the trailer for Madam web, the dream sequence that the bad guy has in the first act about all of the future spider women, mm -hmm. the whole trailer is based off of that. It's, it's a 22nd scene in the entire movie where they're all like the spider crew. Oh yeah. And the whole fucking movie is not that <laughs> it, it's a dream. It's a dream for a moment, and the rest oh, of the movie wow. is about her protecting these girls before they're ever going to have powers. So they took the one possibly cool element of the movie, marketed that like that was going to be the movie, Madam Web and the Spider Chicks versus random fucking dude. So it's why not just make that movie? Why? why, why I... the, the movie is like a trailer for the movie that they advertise that <laughs> is the much more interesting movie. Like, it's, it's meta-moronic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's. Oh, you haven't seen it, Lindsay? No, no. I, I, I've been really bad about seeing movies the last few months or so. No, you haven't. It, You've no. been smart, is what you have been. And not only, yes. I don't. I don't know what kind of copy you watched either, there, Charles. But did you My notice uncle. how horrible the ADR was with yes. the villain? The guy, like, I. Emily There's not even one said that. fucking line in this movie that is actually something he recorded in front of a camera. I'm convinced of that. Like Why the is whole that? the whole movie, the villain's like, "This is my plan, and yeah. we're going to find and this and that." Yeah, Lindsay, it's like it's like studio quality, but it's like you know, there's rain. Like it just totally right. overweighs any sort of like. It's it's just the strongest. Like, just think of Bane on the on the redone Dark Knight Rises. Now take the the effect away from the voice, and you just hear his voice so crystal clear, and it just is unnatural. Like everything about his voice is unnatural. Let alone you know lips not match matching what it is he's saying it's and not so even match bizarre. like the cadence of his voice never changes the entire fucking movie it doesn't matter if he's fighting if yeah. he's in the middle of a fire yeah. if he's trying to like be pissed off it's like all this monotone like what's this fucking card yeah. say oh no i'm going I, to get you <laughs> i'm in trouble what should i do now uh, i love you i hate you <laughs> yeah. not only like the movie opens up uh and it's funny because like you can roast it and have fun with it, but it's not mm. even like a movie that you could watch and have fun watching it roasting it. It's just the secondhand knowledge of it. But the movie opens uh, and you got the the backstory with the mom that's, you know, researching spiders in the Amazon or whatever. <clears throat> and, and and it's got her and it's her and the guy who becomes the villain. And they're like, we've been in the, this jungle for like 18 months looking for this one spider. We're never going to find it. She's like, I know, but we, oh, I'm pregnant. Oh, oh, <laughs> we have to find it but my daughter doesn't want us to. Oh, and then the dude, he's like, okay, well, fuck this. And he goes to walk away and have a conversation with somebody. And then the next shot is her walking over going, I found the spider. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, <my> day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh. 18 months. And you just, ran, Hey, I found it. And so it's, it's shit like that throughout the entire movie. That's just like, yeah. Did anybody a, try? There's a ton of that where it just feels like so, so shoehorned so convenient mm -hmm. uh like the 18 month thing how did she get pregnant Wh who is she banging whatever it was, whatever amount of time they were out well, there no, i said no, 18 right. months but yeah but it's it's just it, it's a long amount of time they've been searching for the spider in this big ass fucking forest and then wait, he wait, so her dad for... isn't the guy the bad guy i this trailers made me think that her that her dad was going to be the bad guy i don't even know if they ever say who the dad is so oh, maybe God. maybe that was okay, script okay, four okay. Okay, okay. Lindsay, there's a portion where, like, mm -hmm. where she's protecting these three girls who who are supposed to be the badass people from the trailer, but they're really not. They're three teenagers that know each other really well, despite meeting for the first time ever. Um, <laughs> As you do. And uh, she goes. Uh, Dakota Johnson's character goes home and looks at a picture of her mom, and then she just has anecdotes to tell everybody about. Yeah, this is my yeah. mom, even though she's been dead for thirty years. Here's. <laughs> It's it's her explaining what's going on on screen in a way that doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> so it's like it's feeding the audience like we're idiots. Like, oh my god, this picture of my mom and she's holding this. That means it must be this. Now I understand what I need to do. It's like, 
<laughs> is this the dialogue or is this like one of those like hearing aid things where they're yeah. explaining the plot because you can't see the movie it's uh, so heavy tell don't show not only that like... she she gets these three girls she saves mm -hmm. them from evil spider-man she takes them okay. to the middle of the fucking woods like <laughs> like pineapple express drops <laughs> them off and says don't move i'll be back in a couple hours or you'll die and they go okay and she leaves and they go hey let's go to that diner over there and dance on the table and it's like what the fuck are you <laughs> okay wow yeah it's uh, it's and i and I, I assure you the the mm -hmm. way that we're explaining the movie is funnier than it actually is like it's not one oh, of those so bad yeah. that it's good experiences it's just you can say it and it's just how oh, wow. asinine it is you just have to laugh How's my girl Dakota? I I, I actually really like Dakota. Johnson. Wooden. It, it, she gave no win? fucks. Oh. Gave no fucks. Oh, yeah, and I don't blame yeah, her at all. Yeah. I think oh, that yeah. she yeah. signed up for something. She saw the script and said, "Okay, you're getting the minimum from me this entire fucking movie." Dude, there's there's a line. Uh, she's a she's an ambulance driver, Lindsay. Her and her partner. Mm -hmm. Her partner's with somebody Adam who's Scott. pregnant. Adam part. Yeah, Adam, Adam Scott. They're they're both uh, ambulance drivers, or you know. <laughs> paramedics EMTs, whatever sure yeah. um there's a pregnancy where a woman's water breaks and he says uh we can wait uh the ambulance will be here i called them and in my head i'm like wait don't you have one in the driveway <laughs> yeah, yeah. don't you have a like employee discount that you can kind of speed up the <laughs> process at all like how about you get in the car and do the thing you do for work <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> it's just so weird like wait what anytime you think about anything that's and happening you're not only that in the beginning of the movie too so so adam scott is playing uncle ben he's oh, playing yeah. ben oh, so that, oh okay he's, okay yeah, and they say they don't hide this it's ben parker so everybody okay. oh uncle ben okay cool and she's sitting down she, uh, dakota johnson's having a conversation with him and they're just talking about life and he's like yeah i started seeing this girl and i I think it's going to get really serious. I really like her. And she goes, oh, what's her name? What would you expect the next piece of dialogue to be? Aunt May. No, no. Thank you. May, May, May something. Thank you. She goes, oh, so what's the name of this girl? And he goes, and she goes, oh, you're going to be secretive? Like that, they do it multiple times in the movie where I'm like, why are you hiding your Easter egg? We all know it's May. What the fuck is this? Like, I'm not going to tell you her name. Why'd you bring it up then, bitch? What is this? I wonder, yeah. do they not have the rights to the character of May? <laughs> I Can don't... they not say her name? <laughs> they had the rights to her when they were going to make Aunt May the movie. Mm. Oh, God. Right. Yeah. yeah they, like, none of it makes sense as far as storytelling or emotions that a character would have. There's mm -hmm. a character that works with them that um, she has a vision of that person dying yeah. and they still die. And like, she's distraught. And it's like, um, as an audience member, I didn't really get to know that person and I don't give a shit. Uh, why are you so torn up? <laughs> it was just so weird. So there's weird. A spot. There's a spot in the third act after mm -hmm. they get uh, Emma Roberts is playing Peter Parker's mother, the one that's pregnant, the one that won't say his name at the fucking baby shower for whatever reason. <laughs> so they rush her. She's the one that has the water break. They, they rush okay. her to the hospital and Dakota Johnson shows up at some point and she's like, how's Ben? And somebody goes, oh, he's doing great. Uh, he, he's excited to be an uncle. He gets to have all of the fun with none of the responsibility. Uh, and it was like, oh, fuck you. Like, it's, it just makes you want to throw tomatoes at the screen. Oh, that would make my skin crawl in the theater. Oh, yeah. that's so bad. Yeah. I did my oh. review and I, I recanted that. And then I, I used the scene from How High where he's like, fuck you, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> God, how is, uh, I don't know, man. I, I do like that the Disney movie skipped the, the, the uncle ben stuff just because you know we didn't need it again yeah but and it was a nice little twist uh, in the, the yeah. last movie where it ended up being aunt may that gives him all the speech yeah that was fun what what the fuck is this matter what thing like what? again i haven't seen it maybe you guys are toying with me maybe it's the greatest mm -hmm. movie ever but this sounds it's made four hundred thousand dollars last weekend it hasn't been out a month yet just remember that oh, yeah, that, that's fair I, I don't know what it is why is like blockbuster video suddenly getting all this like extended screen time in these movies where it's just like, oh, okay. you know, they're, they, they obviously didn't pay you to have their name in this movie. Why are you taking a frame and just look? Nostalgia. Yeah, I was about, I was about yeah, to remember, say, it's definitely nostalgia. Like, remember when you could bring these movies back and get your money? <laughs> yeah. The, so the three girls are, are teenagers and they say something about um, Martha Stewart. 
And Sydney Sweeney's character says, oh, it's so sad what happened to her. And it's like, what? <laughs> Why do three teenagers know about Martha Stewart of 2003? It makes no sense. Wait, yeah, that's the other question. What year is this movie set oh, three. in? Oh, three. Oh, three. Like, 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 definitely oh, three? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Are they trying to... Wait, does that allow it to tie up with Tom Holland or does that like apparently what, what, not that right? seemed accurate enough and then somebody corrected right. me in my comment section they're like actually canonically he was born in 2005 and I'm like I don't know how the fuck you know that but I'll take your mm. word for it hey if a fan said it it's probably true you know why not <laughs> yeah that's hilarious well she travels in time so maybe mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I don't know woof yeah, no, so 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 I, I watched a lot of the Spider-Man cartoon as a kid and Batman, but I, I really liked the Spider-Man one. And Madam Web was there, especially towards the end, but she was like this, like, like other dimensional being that could pull people from different realities and put them into other realities and like mess with time. Like, how do you make a, a movie about a character like that? I'm assuming they nerfed the hell out of her. Like, mm. I, I don't know. It's, I, I, know. I, I have a, a weighted... I, I like my opinion slanted, but you know, seeing something like this is like, yeah, this is why I'm really not excited about anything comic book related for for the near future because they've run out of gas as far as I'm concerned. I mean, if never, you're going, no no, 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 I was just gonna say, it's just, it'll never not be weird to me that after Endgame they stepped up production wow. and started to put out yeah. more and more and more. Not instead, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying they needed to stop it right at Endgame, but you know, like pull back a little bit. Let that's like, you, you, yeah, yeah. Big, pack everything thing. in and start from the bottom again yeah because it was oh, such a yeah. such a i mean i loved both infinity war and endgame and i was like yeah that's a great way to finish oh yeah. something else is coming out next week okay uh, sure because <laughs> i need well, to see spider-man again i'll never get over the fact that they're advertising a spider-man movie that was supposed to come out two months after endgame did <laughs> 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 he might die you never know yeah. but there's a whole movie after that so mm. there's that <laughs> um the one one last thing before we wrap it up uh nothing's really devastating in regards to box office news guys um there was a documentary released called quiet on set mm -hmm. are you guys familiar with the with the subject matter I'm three episodes in. I was watching episode four and started to get tired. But, um, but how yeah, many I'm, I'm, episodes? I don't know. I've I've watched all the way through the Drake Bell stuff. Okay. Um, are, are you familiar with uh, children's television, Lindsay? It's a <laughs> very <laughs> odd way to put that well, question. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Did you watch Nickelodeon back in the nineties? That's a more appropriate question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, oh, that thing. Yeah. I've heard about that. I, yeah. I was more of a Cartoon Network kid, but I did watch a little bit of Nickelodeon. So I, I have remember, been wanting to watch it. I remember him from Good Burger. And he was oh, the yeah. guy who ran Dan the... Schneider. Yeah, he was the manager. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the yeah, first like a episode, creep and like a uh, in, in, in real life, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah very yeah, bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. The yeah, first yeah, yeah. episode was about basically him and his workplace antics, especially towards women. Uh, the second episode was a, uh, about Amanda Bynes, and then the third episode was about Drake Bell and the sexual assault that happened with Brian Peck and things like that. So mm. it's I don't know how many episodes there are, but it's like fuck, like it's already a lot mm. for somebody that watched those shows growing up. That's yeah. Uh, well, so, any amount is too much honestly, but mm -hmm. like yeah. In light of that, considering how fucking it woke, pardon the, the terminology, but how much the evil word. Ah! Considering how much Hollywood likes to suck itself off about being the the moral high ground. Um, do you think maybe they should raise their standards when it comes to set behavior? Because they're making the most noise when it comes, the most news, at least when it comes to really despicable behavior for people, especially like, you know, it's one thing grown adults, you know, whatever, but these are children now, now, yeah. like. Yeah, um, it's one of the reasons why I uh, I always roll my eyes uh, almost all the time. There, there's certain people that I feel like are coming to it from a good place and they word their shit correctly, but I always roll my eyes whenever Hollywood tries to like, you know, lecture all of us normies uh, mm -hmm. because it's just like, dude, clean your own fucking house before you start looking at mine. Uh, right. I mean, you got, you got this guy, I won't go into all the details, but you got this guy who was a, I believe he was the, the, um, the dialogue coach of Nickelodeon who abused 
Drake Bell for a number of years in some pretty horrific ways. He doesn't say it, but they literally show the text that was put into the documents whenever they arrested the guy, and it's mm. pretty horrific. He gets arrested. They have all of the evidence. They have him on phone admitting to all of it on the phone with Drake Bell with them listening just like the FBI, you know, the, the, the headphones and shit. They take this guy to court. Drake Bell is by himself with his family on this side of the courtroom and half of fucking Hollywood is on this side in support of the dude who is getting charged. The guy goes to prison, gets convicted of this, gets out, gets hired by Disney to be a guy on Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. That's yeah. Hollywood. And it kind of going back to what Sean said earlier, uh, if you if you give me enough money, if you give me enough status, I'll look away for anything. And it just is a, a terrible look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not just fucking movies, too. Like uh, I had the, 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 the financial crisis and then the, all the banks and everything got bailed out. And what, what did they do with the money? They gave themselves big bonuses. Yeah. Kind of. You know. Yeah, I mean, anybody with a certain amount of power is corrupt. Like it, it's yeah. just the way. If there's anything that's you know, repetition personified, it's yeah, rich people and people of of in positions of power just continue to <laughs> keep it. it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. get away with it, right? I mean, Brian Singer still hasn't been in jail for a day yet. Like anybody, anything? Yeah, what's happening there? That's a good question. The other thing I don't understand, too, and this is where I also get frustrated. Like, I understand people want to have self-preservation, but if we're in this era, which we seem to be have been in for a number of years now, where it's like, believe all victims, let's mm. go with what happened. Why do people continue to be hush-hush about shit? Mm. Like, we still get stories where they refuse to name names. And it's like, if you're not going to name them, what the fuck is the point of telling the story? Because nothing is going to happen. Nothing's going to be prevented. This person's going to do it to somebody else. So why are you talking? And that's what I don't understand. Like, again, I don't understand the embarrassment side of it. I've never been a victim, knock on wood. But, like, if we're going to whistle blow, blow the fucking whistle. And so, like, I've heard stories. I think it was, um, uh, I think it was on the Boy Meets World, or not Boy Meets World, the, the Brotherly Love podcast. One of the Lawrence brothers was, he all but named Brian Singer. Said that he was told by his agency to go to a hotel room and a high-level director is going to meet him there. And he walked in, the dude came out in a robe and told him to get naked and he was going to take pictures. And if you do this, you'll be the next Marvel character. Like it was all the clues with the timeline and everything that it was probably Brian Singer for X-Men, but he wouldn't say who it was. And so it's like, how many stories are like that out there where the, or, I mean, we had one that went viral not too long ago with Emily Blunt talking about, or not Emily Blunt, Rebecca Ferguson talking about somebody that was just like a fucking monster on set, but wouldn't name the guy. Mm -hmm like why are we why do you protect each other like it's the weirdest thing like they all want to they all want to denounce each other and eat each other but they protect each other just as much yeah um the other thing like if politics is certainly behind the scenes as well too because they they plugged um the fox movie with with uh there was a couple of big actors i mean it was bombshell was up for a, a few awards if i recall correctly they released it just in time to be awards contender uh, mm -hmm. And that's because it was Fox News that was being outed. But um, she said, which came out uh, a year and a half ago, about Weinstein, just a hush-hush movie that didn't really get too much publicity. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that was actually a, a really good story. And we're keeping that hush-hush. Why? Just just fascinating. Like, it, 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 are you... Are you this moral high ground or if it's if it's in house, you don't you don't want to talk about it, which is convenient. But well, just, it, we'll just keep with the, the quiet on set thing. So like I haven't finished the documentary yet, but Dan Schneider mm -hmm. was just interviewed for his response to the documentary. You know who they got to interview him? One of the cast members of all that. Oh, no. Yeah. That's a conflict of interest. <laughs> you would think. And so it's like, it's so tone deaf. It's like, it's meant to be a distraction. It's like this kid who was in a situation probably where he saw a lot of this shit is asking him questions to allow him to defend himself. I, and it's all like empty, empty apologies. It's like, are you saying it to the person that actually said this in the documentary? Or is this just going out to fucking Twitter? Because that doesn't mean much. But just stuff like that, you look at and you're just like, 
I don't ever want to hear anything you motherfuckers have to say about how I should live life. Just shut the fuck up. Enjoy your ivory tower. Yeah. Um, so my question to you guys is, mm -hmm. do you think that Hollywood, to show that they're the moral high ground again, um, do you think that they should maybe hire a third party, an independent company to be human resources for all of film and television sets, especially when it comes to underage actors. I mean, yeah, if, that, if that'll help, sure, yeah. If, if they would even would allow do something, that, yeah. if they would even allow that, I don't know. There's just, like you said, power corruption. I think there's just so much control going on. I mean, I've heard inside stories from, from people that I know that have worked in the industry about how shit works, where, you know, scratch your back, I scratch yours, you fuck me over, you're never going to have a career, and like, uh, I mean, it's just... It's all ran by a, a, a small amount of people that have all the power. And yeah. it's just the way that it goes. Um, all right. We're going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, I'll read the, the super chats back. Um, and if you have anything to ask, uh, you know, a couple of minutes before we shut her down. Um, earlier in the stream, Aww. Hayden, $5 super chat. Thank you. Love the content. You all keep it up. Hoping to go to South by Southwest next year. Awesome. Uh, yeah, that is open to everyone. You just got to buy tickets and, and evidently wait for a very <laughs> long time um, i would not do well with that because i was already yeah. enough of a bitch about the ticketing at fantastic fest so <laughs> waiting for three hours for a movie i might like doesn't sound like a cody thing yeah on a curb i i need i need a chair uh, i'm sorry i'm not i'm not waiting on concrete <laughs> uh, you know who i am <laughs> it's the sean chandler with me can you please <laughs> I don't give you one of his party. lunchables if you let me sit, sit on that chair. <laughs> uh, Thomas with a 10 pound super chat legends. Thank you, Thomas. I'm sure Ooh. you were here for either Sean or Cody, but cheers. Uh, again, uh, five pounds. Love the channel. Thanks all. Cody's Blood and Honey review even made a hundred million, surely. It must have been when we were talking about Madam Webb. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Neil Blomkamp fan, five dollars super chat. Thank you. I love how <laughs> uh, brutally honest Dakota Johnson was, especially when, when the movie bombed. Yeah. What was she? I thought it was Sydney Sweeney that was the most. I don't. Give I, mean, I wouldn't say anybody was brutally honest. Like like Dakota Johnson said something along the lines of, oh, "So much of what I did was in front of a green screen, so I don't even know what this movie's going to look like," which mm -hmm. is not a good statement to make about your movie but uh you know at the end of, all i saw was her basically saying like yeah you know it it, it, it you know turned out to be a, a thing uh sydney sweeney was more so just like dead honest about the strategic choice of doing the movie uh which was refreshing but mm. also just you know that, that that gives you one more reason like i said earlier to be like oh we're supposed to like pat these guys in the back for this movie huh because the mean old studio no nobody gave a fuck None of them. <laughs> yeah, and I, I hate to, I always go back, but um, Betsy Palmer, mm -hmm. uh, she infamously said that the script for the original Friday the Thirteenth was shit, mm -hmm. and uh, it just so happened that she needed a car, and she did Friday the Thirteenth because she needed a new car. Ellen Burstyn, this last year, <laughs> <laughs> she told him no three times, and so she said, "Fine, I'll do it if you give a fuckload of money to the scholarship that I'm a fan of." <laughs> <laughs> that was months before the movie came out. <laughs> um, and most recently, Alan, $5. Sorry to go off topic, mm. but thoughts on the new Alien movie. Love y'all's channels. Keep up the awesome ass content. Thank you, Alan. We did talk about it just uh, prior to the yeah. last. I'll back minutes. maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we we, we discussed it. I, I, other than the release date, which is August, which uh, to me, it just seems like... Um, 20th century isn't completely confident, but I I'm excited from the little that they've shown, which is like you said, Cody, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an old school teaser. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a novel idea. Is it coming out this August or next August? Yes. This That's August. Sick. I also love that we're getting trailers for movies like closer to their release instead of like a year, a year and a half, two years. Like how long yeah. was I watching that free guy trailer for before that uh, movie finally came out? This like, is me off with video games. How far out you get a trailer. They're like GTA yeah. six coming in 2027. You're like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So 
Yes, thank you, Dice. Somebody fund Charles's portable lazy boy. Yeah, I, I'll take that. But that's actually a billion dollar idea. You just like press a button, and lazy boy comes out. Like we got, let's get on that, guys. Yeah, I need the back support. Um, Jacob says, I mean, there's a lot of people in Hollywood. I wouldn't assume that literally all of them are playing defense for sexual predators. Yes, but it seems like um, as a whole, right. It's yeah. it's not just that, like the way that I've exp I, I think I was talking with my uncle not too long ago or something about this. And it's like, I think Ricky Gervais said it perfectly. You don't live in the real world. You don't have any where to stand to tell normal people about how to live. Something right. along those lines. I'm fucking up. I'm, I'm paraphrasing the shit out of it. But that's that's it. Like even with politics and stuff like that, like everybody's entitled to their opinion, but who is president affects you significantly different than who how it affects those of us like right. you don't give a fuck about grocery prices <laughs> like you know that there's just all those little things of why i always right. roll my eyes where it's like everybody's entitled to their opinion sometimes you have a good point I'm not saying that once you make money your opinions are relevant that's that's not at all what i'm saying but hollywood as a whole seems to have a theme for how they think which is they're the moral high ground and they mm -hmm. know best, and all, all of us simpletons need to, to to catch up to where they're at. And when you see shit like this, it's like, yeah, go fuck yourself. Yeah, it, 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 the funny thing is, especially with Hollywood, the, with the way they are relatable, if you need to watch a movie that, that speaks to your personal experiences as somebody who's, you know, not doing financially well, you need to watch, like, Korean movies, because, I mean, what was it, the 2019 Child's Play, that was the roomiest poor person apartment i've ever seen <laughs> yeah that, that struggling mom she got it herself uh, like uh, uh, like don't get me wrong i'm very glad that what's her face in parks and recreation had a nice place for herself to live but sure. come on man you know like yeah it was it was very room very roomy uh granted i get it it's a set but you're not you're not speaking to people who live in slums that's for sure mm -hmm. uh neil blomkin fan again five dollar super chat thank you uh, Rewatch Tim Burton Planet of the Apes. That ending was weird, but thoughts on it. It is weird. Oh, that's that's an interesting. Mm, we are getting another Apes movie in a little bit. Which I'm excited for. The last three were so good. I'm pumped for this one, man. I'm like, oof. I, I, I'm letting my hopes get up a little bit. Ooh. Uh, so I, I don't know. It was an inverted. So the Tim Blur Tim, Tim, Tim Burton. Burton. Yeah, that that that's on purpose. Uh, the Tim Burton one, it's it's an inverted remake of the Charlton Heston one with with the shocking ending of a of a statue. Mm -hmm. um, Monkey Lincoln. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah, Sorry. Ape, Ape Ape that doesn't make any sense right. in the context of the movie. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, the, the original... rest of the world would progress just as the exact same. Like time, time is a circle, mm -hmm. and it just repeats. This time it's monkeys. Next time yeah. it's fish. Time after that it's birds. But everything's always the same. <laughs> Not a dog, big dog Lincoln. Lincoln. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 odd. It's odd. Um, wait, I do have the date. Where are you? Uh, no, I don't. All right. So, what was it? Something of the Planet of the Apes. The the Kingdom. Is, uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Yes. It's coming out in May, I think. Is it connected to the most re recent? trilogy i haven't looked at anything it about. is but it's not like it, it's decades and decades yeah. later so they said there's like not a continuation, like continuation yeah not like there's a... not like a mention of caesar or anything it's it's mm. it's after that trilogy but it's a pretty significant time jump yeah i'm kind of fired up for that mm -hmm. um all right so we're about at two hours now um thank you to everyone who for the super chat thank you for everyone who for joining us uh importantly Cody here and Sean, who who left a little bit earlier. If you want to rewind for his Bastard. contributions, <laughs> I'm busy. I got a big YouTube audience. Me, me, Look at all this merch I have. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna lie, that Ghostbuster sweater looks pretty comfortable. You know, mm -hmm. I'll give him that. <laughs> yeah. So you're gonna take the studio's money just to say whatever they want you to, huh? <laughs> Don't think twice about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell me how great it is, Sean. Go ahead. <laughs> um Lindsay, what do you got coming up uh i've been experimenting with youtube shorts lately and i'm still kind of playing with that just kind of for fun just to get uh, content out there do fun things as a video editor although i also did just watch this series called from which is on mgm plus did you guys know about mgm plus come on 
Apparently, there's an MGM Plus, and I who are kinda... they going to merge with next year? <laughs> <laughs> I thought Fox bought them before they were Disney Fox. I thought Amazon was MGM's outlet. Oh my god! Oh, it, it is. It's also on Amazon, but it's like it's its own thing. But like through Amazon, it's weird. And I kind of want to do an episode uh, to do like a little video talking about that. So we'll see. <laughs> well, if I can, if I can make a script that makes sense and is fun, yeah, you'll see a rant about that. Okay, okay. Cody. Hi. Hello. Um, <laughs> well, I just released a review yesterday for Late Night with the Devil and a review today for Roadhouse. Those are all um, recent releases. Roadhouse comes out tomorrow on Amazon. Uh, you'll get a Ghostbusters Frozen Empire review on Friday. Uh, and then I'm sure a Ghostbusters ranking at some point on the weekend. And then I have a couple different ideas for next week that I'm not fully committed to. Uh, but a video coming tomorrow that will be super interesting um i <laughs> through a twist of fate uh i sat down and did a video call today with some of the people who created blood and honey uh winnie the pooh mm -hmm. blood and honey and uh, for those that know there was a ton of drama between me and them over the past year uh and we had a really good talk worked out a lot of bullshit and so i'm gonna do a video tomorrow kind of detailing that phone call and so that i have something on the youtube channel that puts all that to bed uh, so that'll come tomorrow. Cool. So you're bought and paid for. Okay. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Fucking around. Look, we're all owned by some, someone. I'm owned by the King Shark syndicate. Like we've all got some bosses somewhere, you know. Like. <laughs> and I'm all, I'm bought by hospitals. So I just go around and, and do reviews of all the hospitals across the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so uh, Chauncey and Fuego couldn't join us. Uh, you know, everything's play it by ear at this point. So yeah. thank you to everyone. Uh, I'd like to get back together to discuss this weekend for Ghostbusters, but yes. um, just keep an eye out. And again, thank you to everyone for joining us. And uh, we'll see you soon. Right, Lindsay? Yeah, right? no, I mean, honestly, I'm down for next week if you want to. Uh, I'll see. I will find time you to have see homework. Ghostbusters. You have homework. Right. Yes. Oh, this God, is Willis so Greedia, people. No promises. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, guys. Good night. Soon? Question mark. Bye.